Immortals! I'm Jensen, welcome back to Hydranera. In the previous episode that we recorded live, we set up this uh, mechanical monstrosity here. We figured out all of the tier 3 machines, and turns out there are just a couple of bugs one block further that way that uh, stop the machines from being able to actually harvest anything. So we moved them over to a place where they do actually, you know, pick up soil and they burst it out. And we set up this water filtration system with this auto repair circuit. And all we need now is not only an elbow to replace that, which is just completely superficial, we also need a bunch of repair kits, like an absolute heap of them. Four per spanner hurtling unit that we have all along here and two of them over here as well. So we're going to fill those up. That is going to repair this here water filtration unit. And that is going to take all of the damage from the damage in the uh, mines, which would ordinarily be applied to the machines. Uh, we've also got another kind of efficiency system set up. We're going to, since these pipe in from above, these tier 3 pipes, we're going to be having a huge line of tier 3 pipes going all the way into the mine over there. They're going to be uh, piping all the way up here, and because this grinder right here is not going to be taking any damage, we're going to be filtering, or, filtering all of the dirt chunks right into the top of here. So that's going to work just fine. However, it's not going to work until we actually repair the units. What's you left for you to make before the DLC anyway? So are you going to make something every plot before moving on? We kind of started a little bit of agriculture. I think we finished fishing in the cursed bugged playthroughs. So we're probably not going to go back to that. I do want to set up a gigantic uh, game crashing monstrosity in Ice Helm, which is where we're currently at now. And then after that, we're probably going to go into the DLC and check out this whole lava ice water uh, system that they've got going on. I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh cart as well for all of these repair kits because we are going to need so many repair kits that it's not funny. Now, unfortunately, I also have to cancel the Deathloop series that I was going on as well because that game runs like absolute ass. So I'll come back to it eventually. I am planning on getting a second PC so that I can stream essentially through a capture card. So I'll be able to play all of the really, really beautiful, pretty games on this computer. I'll use a 4K capture card going into a second computer and that's what I'll stream through so that I'm kind of like not choking up so many resources on a single computer. I'm gonna go ahead, get into this lift right here. And then what I'm also gonna do is look at why my uh, camera is making me look so weirdly washed out. Don't mind me. Let me just uh, quickly fix this. Filters, edit filters, yes, very nice. We'll get off the elevator so we don't have to get stuck on there in the first place. I think it's got a, a weird color correction thing going on because I look super bright. Is that better? That looks uh, significantly better, doesn't it? Maybe less contrast. That's better. I think, yeah, that's significantly better, actually. Okay. That gives me time to buy and play the game. Oh, um, Deathloop. It's, it's genuinely worth playing. It is so goddamn fun. It's a roguelite. It's, it's probably the biggest budget roguelite that there has been ever made. I'm just going to walk to the... No, I'm not going to take the truck because we can stick the what's -a dingle in the back of this big boy here. The, big, the back of Lofty. Yes. Yeah, it's so worth it. It's so, so worth it. Um, I already have played a good, like, 50 hours of the game as well some years ago. So I kind of know a lot of the strategies, but I'll go through it, just kind of, like, showcase all of the really cool mechanics and the story and all of that stuff as well. I'll try not to spoil anything for anyone either. Okay, we're going all the way over here because we need to buy ourselves a cart. I'm thinking Agile cart because those are probably the best ones to navigate Ice Helm with. And then we're going to fill it up with repair kits back at Ice Helm, because that's where we're keeping all of our money, I think. Actually, I don't know if we've got money here. I probably should have checked, shouldn't I? Maybe I should have. No, no money right there. Go ahead, try this direction over here. Uh, shut up, friendo. Maybe there's some money in this bucket? Oh, no. We probably have to go somewhere else to get some money. That's okay, I'll take this quad right here. We'll go over to the Mills Aquifer, we'll go and get a gold bar and then we'll get our money. Because I'm pretty sure in the last episode we blended them all together to kind of um, play a little bit of the Ice Helm without having to worry about money whatsoever. Okay! Oh, is that Minecraft option in reference to the Minecraft horror game I suggested? It's literally Minecraft. Uh, that's going to be the one that's going to kind of like kick off all of the huge open world uh, crafting RPGs. Because people have requested a lot of them. Subnautica's also been on the list since I started streaming back in 2018. So uh, that one's, that was probably going to come after Minecraft, but I do have to plan it out because I have thalassophobia, I think it's called. A genuine fear of oceans. And I'm, I'm going to have to plan out little um, objectives to do, stream by stream, so that we don't kind of like stagnate in... Why are we here? We need to be at the Mills Aquifer. So that we don't stagnate in progress. Gotta be said. 
Because there's only so much swimming around in the uh, dark depths of the ocean, screaming my tits off, that could really reasonably be entertaining. You know, maybe 150 hours then, people are all like, oh, well, I've probably seen enough, to be quite honest. And then they'd move on, they wouldn't finish the series, which sucks. Because I'll be finishing it. Okay, now that we're here, I'm going to get myself a gold bar, going to run over my bed, but that's fine, we sleep in the dirt regardless. Actually, let's go ahead and just, nope, it's daytime. Never mind. All right, let's get some money. Whoops, that was clumsy. And let's throw this on the back of the quad. Did it weld? Yes, it welded. Perfect. Uh, let's also refuel this bad boy right here real quickly before we carry on. Whoops. So close. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough fuel. Let's go. Nice. Please play vanilla Minecraft before doing any other ones. Yeah, I will. I'll definitely play vanilla Minecraft. I do really want to play some of the huge mod packs, but I know that they're going to be massive time sinks. And I kind of also want people to play them with who are also YouTubers and not just, just viewers. Although I was having this kind of like, this idea of tossing up between just playing Skyblock and then inviting a random viewer into play. And if they die, they're gone. If they survive the whole episode, they're still gone. Like it's a different, it's a different person that we're working with every single time. I think that'd be really, really funny. Four bucks, 59 bucks. Now we definitely need more than that. Let's go ahead and see what this uh, giant gold brick is worth. It's rare to find vanilla survival anymore. Yeah, I'll play vanilla first, definitely. I want to beat the dragon and do all of that stuff before I uh, go on. Although, holy hell, 600k, that's insane. Gotta be said, I did play a little bit of Minecraft when Microsoft bought Mojang and started updating lots and lots of um, mechanics about it on PlayStation. They were way late as well. But unfortunately, I didn't really get the hang of most of the mechanics that they, they put in the game, like Elytra and all of the post-game stuff. And uh, what else was there? There was um, copper. I never understood copper. I don't know why that's even in the game. Copper copper nuggets. That's kind of stupid. That's like something a, a modding community would have done. Now, what are we buying? We were going to buy a cart, which is just over here. And then we're going to fill it up with repair kits. The new updates are cool. Elytra was before Microsoft got it. When was Elytra added? Because I Googled it very recently uh, to prove to my yin set that Microsoft did actually spend two and a half billion dollars on, on the Mojang IP, which is pretty funny. Uh, and that was like 2014. Copper is useful for automation. So is Redstone. I can basically automate everything in the game with Redstone anyway. I've literally played the game that much. So I've even got uh, my own kind of like little schematics for an automated chicken cooker so that you never run out of food. However, unfortunately, I've only been able to play it on... I think it's Bedrock Edition. That's the console one. Why don't we put this in the back of the ute? And why are we leaving our ute behind? Good questions. Probably because I'm distracted by talking about Minecraft. So yeah, uh, I, I am very good at the game. I even speak the language, the enchantment language. Because funnily enough, that language comes from Doom. Weird, huh? It was bought at 1.11. Bedrock is not great. No, it is not. Uh, redstone is dependent on the chunk that it's on in, in, in Bedrock. And unfortunately, if you go too far from a chunk and it just uh, flat out de-renders, then everything that was working on there does no longer work. So it's very, very difficult to actually uh, automate anything in there unless you are literally at the place. And you kind of also have to make the machines very vertical as well because if they kind of like go over a second chunk and you've got some automation that uh, requires both chunks to automate, as soon as one of those chunks de-renders, then the whole thing just breaks and you have to uh, basically put it all back together again, which is such a damp fart. Very, very damp fart indeed. Very damp fart. What's the other one? Is it the Java version? I think the Java version is the one that's on the uh, PC, right? It looks really good. The only downside about the PC version is that it doesn't have the server support that consoles have. It's pretty cool. That is still true, right? You still have to use, like, Hamachi and stuff to be able to play online with Minecraft? Or have they finally integrated a little bit of uh, multiplayer quality of life into the game? I don't know. I haven't played it on PC in ages. Java Edition, yes. I am Minecraft aficionado. I got this. Nice. Maybe I'll get you on for an episode. All right, nice. I'll get you on for an episode of Skyblock. How does that sound? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure... That, like, the, the whole premise that I want to do is Skyblock is a very dangerous game, and I'll just give whoever's in, you know, the server with me at the time all of the really, really dangerous crap jobs where you're always working at range or you're making mob grinders or uh, stuff like that, right? So just kind of, like, 
slave labor <laughs> it gives you a good call it so that the uh the series could just continue ticking onwards all right uh so we got the money now we want to put this in the cart go up to the store get ourselves a few repair kits and by a few i mean uh well over 200. the essential mod on forge allows you to play multiplayer in the same way bedrock does oh that's pretty cool that sounds fun it does sound fun doesn't it all right I do want to play Skyblock modded though. There are some uh, Skyblock mod packs that are just absolutely insane. And I kind of want to fiddle with them. There's one that adds nuclear reactors. There's a few that adds nuclear weapons. I, I quite like the idea of, uh, you know, maybe uh, one day one of the viewers and I will uh, kind of break off onto our own and have a nuclear arms race ending in some kind of giant destruction of the, of the base. Which is bad for everybody, especially the person who survives. Okay, I'm not actually going to drop that money there. We just wanted that to buy the cart. Let's go ahead and find the bags. The tool bags are on the floor right over here. Great! Let's go ahead, drop that there. And I'm just going to drop all of these right into the cart as fast as I can. AFAP. As fast as possible. Sky Factory is the best, best one. Dude, being Yinsen's Minecraft slave was on my bucket list. Perfect! That's got to be on a lot of people's bucket list at this point, right? Because a lot of people have requested Minecraft. Like, well over 20. Which is a pretty big proportion if you consider that I've still got under a thousand subs. And most of those people never request games in the first place. So 20 people are requesting Minecraft. It's pretty crazy. Although, got to be said, probably the most requested game on my channel has been Doki Doki Literature Club, which is why that one's on the list. I've had well over 40 people request that one specifically, like, in my personal life and online. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy just how many people want to see me play Doki Doki Literature Club again. Because I streamed it back in... That was the first game I ever streamed. It was actually genuinely terrifying and, uh... I had to hide behind my mic to not get got by the jump scares in it. Minecraft time? Yeah, I knew you'd like that there. Yeah, Juju, right? Really? I never thought it was that good. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's stellar. Honestly, it's probably one of the best visual novels that I've ever played. No, it is definitely the best visual novel I've ever played. Maybe that'll change once I uh, finish developing You Are Dog, but... You know, until then, until then, it's probably going to be Doki Doki. And there has been a new version of it come out called Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, which has uh, reduced the mechanics, which I found accidentally, by the way. It, it, there's a mechanic in there where if you go into the game files of Doki Doki Literature Club, you can kind of like remove players, uh, NPCs from the game, and it does actually affect the game. It's really, really cool. I accidentally uh, figured this out on live stream because at the time I was studying my bachelor's of IT and I was really just kind of like really into the game and I kind of wanted to know how the game kind of just functioned and we were like uh, halfway through I think the second playthrough after Sayori does her um, her little depression bit uh, you know Sayori wasn't in the first one and I noticed that Sayori's uh, player character wasn't actually in the game files at that point so I thought huh maybe this actually does do something so I started playing with him, and I accidentally found out the uh, mechanic that you... <laughs> the intended mechanic of of finishing the game. But, in Doki Doki Literature Class, you are playing the game on essentially a virtual machine. So there's no, like, poking around in the game files. You can get all of the secrets, all of the uh, achievements and stuff in one big sitting. And yes, there is a reason we are getting so many of these toolbags. Yes, it's Juju. Nice. Whoops. We don't need this. This is a rake. What is this, a creepypasta? Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, I know. Accidentally finding things is, is so funny. It happens so frequently as well. I've got a chemical interest when it comes to game programming, as well as having studied it formally. I specialized in C++ and C Sharp. I never got the hang of Java. Um, but recently, I'm kind of in love with Python. It's so simple. <laughs> like C Sharp, C++, you got to read a lot of documentation to be able to do anything with it. And it's one of those languages where you kind of like sit there you finish a, a gigantic, huge thousand line block of code and then you run it and you think, oh no, something's broken here. So you spend an additional few days just kind of figuring out what that is. And as soon as you get another error message, you're like, yes, progress. Like it's that kind of language. But Python, Python's so simple, my God. I wish I learned that one first. Uh, it's only 27,500 bucks, that's pretty cheap. I'll take that, good. Woo Nightmare House is winning by here right now. Uh, I'll give... Oh my god, the frame drop. <laughs> I'll give it until Wednesday. I'll give the poll until Wednesday, and then I'll see who's winning at that point. I'll keep up basically the same games on there. 
for a while. We'll vote on the next game that replaces whatever two games win on the Discord. Okay, I'm getting massive frame drop. I'm probably going to have to go into my computer settings and see if there's not... Whoops! I just got thrown off the edge there by literally nothing. Oh, look at this frame drop. That's what I like to see. That's the end game, baby! When the game literally refuses to continue performing as intended. That's exactly how we want to play this. Good grief. That's actually not the best, eh? <laughs> I kind of experience it firsthand. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start clearing up all of the things that may be choking up my CPU. And then we'll go back to the game really, really quickly. I'm just open up my task manager really quickly. Oh, CPU's at 100%. Ouch. Ouchie wowie. Ow. Uh, okay, Spotify's are doing okay. Hydronera has taken everything up hilariously. What else we got? Probably don't need my VR going at this point. And I probably also don't need Netflix because I haven't paid for that service in three months. I don't know why Netflix insists uh, that I should be uh, signed up to them. They are literally a terrible service. Market Darwinism, baby! If you do a bad service, people unsubscribe. All right, let's go ahead and stick that there. We'll clear up this walkway a little bit. And I also think that we may want a couple of those smaller brick blocks so that we can kind of create a path onto these machines here so that we don't really need to... Ah, I suppose we can just drop one in here now. There we go. Uh, we can probably do this a bunch, actually. Two, three, and four. Good, so that's that one filled up to about 19, if one just got used. We'll try and fill this one up as well to probably another one, because I think we stuck one in there before. And go ahead and stand on this one next, and now we'll fill this bad boy up too. One in there, one in there, one in there, and one in there. Excellent, that one should be absolutely full. Let's go ahead and jump onto these ones. No, that was so close. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that one in there. Good. One, two. Uh, you haven't seen it yet. Wait, do we just drop a bunch on the floor? Oh, that's so embarrassing. Can we pick it up from here? Please? Please? No, it does nothing. Oh, well. Oh, that fixed it. <laughs> Got it working. Okay, uh, let's go around here because there's only one way out of this heinous little death trap that we've created. Now uh, we'll go all the way up here again. So there is a little number on the side of these spanner hurtling units that tell you exactly how many of the tools you've stuck in it so far, which is exactly what I'm using to fill these up. And this one's next. One and two and three and four. Good. So all of that stress that is going to go into that one single grinder there is now going to be transferred to all of these little water filter units. And we're going to have to refill the spanner hurtling unit over there probably the most because it's got the first water filter in the chain. That one will take the most damage. But we've probably bought ourselves a good couple of hours with all of that. Okay, so if we start piping in more and more machines over here, it's going to start making more of these dirt chunks fall into this one grinder which is absolutely fine. And then we can kind of like just absolutely spam resources out the ass. It's gonna be fantastic. Woo! And the reason I was embarrassed was because I, I was, I was supposed to, uh, sorry, what's going on? Woo! Scott, remember when you said that you're a part of the uh, creation of Ultimate Custom Night? The only reason I was embarrassed was because how was I supposed to know that you made that? Didn't expect you to have known. Wait, how, uh, wait, how did you? How did you make Ultimate Custom Knight? I call Cap. I call Cap on this one. You didn't make uh, Ultimate Custom Knight. I'm sure. I'm certain of it. That was a, a full Scott Cawthon endeavor, wasn't it? Ultra Custom Knight. Right. Okay. That's kind of cool, actually. Maybe I'll check it out. I'll check it out in between uh, Hydrogenera and Dragon's Dogma. Uh, I, do, we do need some scales, actually. We're going to need a bunch of scales, and we're probably also going to need a bunch more of these floor panels so that we can kind of, like, uh, build out a workshop. Maybe that's our next wee project. Since this is now running, we'll go and get some more floors for the shop floor. How does that sound? I think it sounds pretty damn good. Go ahead, go up here. These wires can probably actually just go down south. We could probably start setting up the Logic Gem compressors. Well, get these pipes out of the way as well. But, unfortunately, I don't think we have enough parts to kind of, like, taper it off, right? Hell yeah. It is absolutely no real law, so it's a perfect in-between game. Well, I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to check it out. I'm just going to check it out. i got a couple of friends who have been saying, Oh, kind of cool that you're going back to Dragon's Dogma. Like, personal friends. Personal friends are uh, excited that that's happening now. 
So this is now a bucket of gems. We probably don't need to rock that boat too hard. We can probably just maybe tack on the machines that we want after this. So let's go ahead and get ourselves... Damn, we just got rid of the pipe cart. We need this. We need this over here. We'll put the piping infrastructure in there. And then we'll see if we can't stick the uh, Watsma Dingles down under them. Probably a good idea. So I probably also want to kind of remove all of this crap out of the way as well. Ah, oh, probably not necessary, actually. All right, that is a T-junction. We're going to need a couple of those. We're also going to need a couple of the straights. So if we have this one dropping into a logic compressor, let's actually place these compressors really quickly. This one can go... Well, it can't go there, actually, can it? Can't go there at all. It can't go in front of that one, so it would have to basically go where this panel is right here. So this one will filter into a logic compressor. It needs to be a gap. So it needs to be a gem compressor unit here. Nope, that's too far back. We want it a little bit closer. That's where we want it good, and we want another gap of two. So we want this one here, and this one can go... That's not going to work, is it? Because we need five of these things in a line, and it doesn't really look like we have the ability to put five of them in a line here. Unless we stick... Okay, one gap, two gap, three gap, four gap. We need five. God, I hope we don't have to do this entire sorting system again, to be honest. I mean, we could kind of snake it around and then potentially stick it just going along this wall here and have some staircases going over the actual conveyor belts. But it's getting a little bit tight in here, sadly. It's getting a little bit too tight. Whew. Very for fun game. Hi, is the stream working today? Yes, yes it is. Turns out what had happened is my ISP failed to give me an invoice, so I didn't pay my internet bill on time. They wanted me to pay it a week after the last one because they didn't um, tell me about a bunch of other stuff, essentially. And so I paid it on the spot, and they uh, basically lifted the gigantic choke that they just artificially stuck on my account, which is just revolting service. However, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant... Uh, we are with a gas providing company because our hot water is linked up to gas bottles and this company is literally just the absolute crappest utility service I have ever used. They expect us to kind of like place the orders for the bottles whenever they go empty so that they can come and replace it. But if you haven't paid your bill from the last tank, they will just like flat out refuse the order, which is not what they say in their terms and conditions. They say that that's just never going to happen, uh, which is just a, a flat-out lie, because I, they, they've been doing it to us um, since we've started with them. Now, it took them a week last time to tell us, hey, you've got an overdue um, bill on your account, and there is no way for us, the customer, to be able to tell what our balance is, because they've got an app. They've got an app, and it's uh, absolutely revolting. You can only order things through it. They don't display your account status or anything like that on the app, even though they've got your account number and a bunch of other stuff on the app. Um, you have to manually call them every single time and ask them what the balance is. That's weird. I didn't do that. So, essentially what they did is they took a week to tell us, no, we're not going to deliver this, which is against their own policy, um, because we hadn't paid our bill, because they failed to tell us we had anything owing... Uh, so we just kind of expected it to, to have been done already. And then, uh, it took them another four days after I immediately paid the bill uh, for them to come back to us and say, hey, uh, we've, we've uh, blocked your order because you haven't paid the bill. And I'm like, yeah, we, we have, though. We've actually already paid the bill. Um, so I went back through my emails and I looked up all of the times that they've kind of also done this. They've done this six times in the year and a half that we've been using them. They are absolutely garbage. We have had a total of one month of the 16 months we've been living at the property that we're living at. One full month without access to hot water because these idiots at uh, Rock Gas Limited are just unable to process their own customers. It's like they're afraid of money. It, it's pissed me off to no end. They're just absolute garbage. And there's no competition, so there's, there's no other way around it. All right, rant over. Also, the two Delta and fan games have, put in, have very heavy spoilers for other games. They're multiverse-based. Earthbound spoilers for Chapter 2 of Delta Traveler and Paper Mario spoilers for Ribbit. I'm not going to get too into the uh, lore of Paper Mario. I can virtually guarantee you that. So I'm not I'm not too worried about that. And Earthbound, that may actually kick off an interest uh, for me to play Earthbound, if anything. 
Just joined, what are we doing today? Uh, we are doing the Hydroneer uh, kind of like lag the game until it crashes challenge. And we're also then going to do a little bit more Dragon's Dogma, the first one. And then I'm going to be going to Dragon's Dogma 2 after I finish Dragon's Dogma 1 because Capcom fixed their huge latency issues. Paper Mario's lore is very deep and dark. Yeah, so is Zelda's, but at the same time, like, they're not games that I'm necessarily good at. <laughs> they look cool. They look cool. I am also afraid of Nintendo. I genuinely fear Nintendo. They are very creator hostile. Them, Warner Media Group, and Konami are probably the biggest companies that I fear when it comes to Let's Plays because Warner um, Media Group have blocked entire six hour videos of mine because they detected a few seconds of a band that they assigned a cover, a cover that they did. Uh, so uh, that was a, a six hour stream that was just blocked immediately, unfortunately. What were we doing? What were we doing? I think we were trying to like plan out how to get the gem compressor units. We're probably gonna have to snake them around in a in a corner, which isn't so bad now that I think about it. We need floors. We need a factory floor before we can kind of think about all of that though. Yeah, Konami uh, have a history of striking channels, not claiming, but striking channels who play some of their stuff. Uh, they're absolutely creator hostile, which sucks because I'm gonna be playing Silent Hill 2 as soon as it comes out this October. And what else is there? Um, the other one. Nintendo. Nintendo have a habit of striking anybody that kind of like attempts to replicate popular IPs. Like that guy who made a Pokemon creepypasta fan game. Nintendo uh, could have said, nice job, thanks for the free advertisement. But instead they took them to court for millions of dollars to make an example of them. So I'm, I'm very afraid of Nintendo. No, like really dark? Yeah, so is Majora's Mask. <laughs> Majora's Mask is uh, one of the darkest kind of arcade games I've ever played. Paper Mario music is used by YouTubers quite a bit due to it being the one Nintendo franchise they never seem to strike. Oh uh, yeah, I've heard the exact same thing about Undertale and unfortunately every single Undertale video that I've had has had copyright claims on them and as of about a week and a half ago they started rejecting my disputes despite the fact that Toby Fox has publicly put out a statement saying hey um if you're getting copyright claimed uh, by Materia, the, the music company that manages my music, um, just dispute it and it gets lifted. Um, that's not true whatsoever. Materia are actually just like a, bad, a bunch of absolute uh, greedy scumbags and I think it's their only source of revenue. I think their only source of revenue is to steal from YouTubers who are rightly using the music under Creative Commons. Which is very disgusting. Uh, so... I'm sorry if I don't trust you on this instance, but I have direct evidence of people giving me uh, kind of like permission to use their music and then the copyright ID holder uh, uh, claims the videos and makes them virtually worthless on the channel. All right, good. Uh, we're going to take this one all the way to the town because I don't think that we can buy floor panels at the Ice Helm store, unfortunately. We're going to have to go to the housing market. Yes. Okay, we'll do that. I might get around to Paper Mario. Uh, uh, honestly, I'm probably going to have to grow my channel before I can get away with playing any of the Nintendo games because there is going to be a time where I'm going to need to get lawyers involved and that's going to require money and at the moment I don't make any money on YouTube. Well, the game has do does have the ability to turn music off, thankfully. Yeah, but it's not the actual music that's the issue in this instance. It's the content. Um, uh, people who play Nintendo games have had manual claims based on the gameplay frequently as well and it's always small youtubers big youtubers seem to get away with it uh, simply because you know there'd be a public outcry and nintendo executives would get lynched in the street within the hour but it seems like small youtubers is kind of where nintendo thinks that their revenue should just be stemming from it's very scummy it's very scummy a lot of game companies do it i don't like it too much but there's nothing i can do about it unfortunately okay we'll get a few of these small ones so that we can access the what are they? The repair units up on the second mezzanine floor that we built in Ice Helm. Maybe like six of them will do the trick. We probably don't need many more than that. And we're also going to get a few of these really, really big ones as well. One, two, three, four, five. We probably want a bunch of these, don't we? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17 should do the trick. I don't know if we brought any money. We might have to run back for a little bit of coin. 
I got the goods if you got the cash. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to run back for a little bit of coin. I think that we left our gigantic pile of money back in the Ice Elm shop thing. anyway. Not in the bucket, but right next to the bucket. You can't copyright visual gameplay that's actively against the law. No, it's not, because uh, Nintendo is supported by the law when they make all of these claims. It's, uh, it's their art. They hold the IP, and if you interpret their IP, uh, they're able to uh, copyright claim anything that you make. That's the law. If you, if you want to quote the law, that is the direct law. That's why Telltale didn't strike people, people playing their games on YouTube. Yeah, but they can actually do so since they made it. They own the intellectual property of the games. That, well, actually, no. If they didn't own the intellectual property of the games that they made, which tell, Telltale technically wouldn't have, they would have just leased the right to use them for games like Walking Dead or uh, Borderlands or other things like that. Even, I think the... Um, the, uh, what was it? the one with Bigby Wolf? What was that one? Um, it was a fairy tale land one. Even that was based on, on uh, off of a comic with a popular IP. So they didn't necessarily make their own games before. I don't know if that's changed. I don't know if they're making original games now, but uh, you can't claim the intellectual properties of somebody else's IP. You just can't do that. If you don't hold the IP claim, then you you don't you don't have that luxury. Wolf Among Us. Yes, I love that one so much. That was such a fun game. I played it twice. I'm probably going to play it again on the channel at some point. Here we go. There's our 600,000 buckery booze. Let's take this into the city. And we're probably just going to leave it in the city as well. Just so that we always have a little bit of money in there to float us. Yeah, like you can dispute uh, copyright claims all day until the cows come home. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, the person who wrote the artwork usually has the rights and the final say. Unless... They delegated the management of that artwork to a third party. Otherwise, that third party has final say, regardless of what the artist says or does. Like Toby Fox says, I want my music to be essentially public domain creative commons and everyone can use it. And Materia Music, uh, who actually hold and manage the content ID, have said, uh, no, Toby, this music is ours now and we are going to be claiming revenue on it so you can, um, quite frankly, uh, drink our piss. Also, thank you for trusting us. Also, sorry for the controversy. It was a big, it was a big red flag, but unfortunately, you know, sorry, Toby, you lost out in the end. And I think he's too busy with Deltarune now to dispute it legally because uh, he's working on something else. Why would he care? Why would he care about a YouTuber being able to play Megalovania on their channel if he's literally creating a gigantic video game with a studio? It's just beyond uh, his scope now. Might not be able to make it to all of your stream starting Wednesday because stool starts back up on Wednesday, sadly. Oh, that sucks. That sucks indeed. I put this message again because it's censored for some reason. I looked at the auto moderation settings for my channel and it's on the uh, least strict automation possible. I, I'm not entirely sure why people are getting uh, word blocked for things like death or kill or stuff like that. Like, it's not bad. It's, it's common everyday things that you would say if you're under, like, I don't know, 90 years old. Will you be playing Funky... F funk, f what? Sorry? Funky Fusion when it releases? I've never heard of it. What is that? Funky Fusion. Sorry, for the new messages, there's a little icon in the bottom left hand of my chat that uh, it just kind of, like, it's an emoji. And it wants me to do emojis, but I'm not even signed in on my streaming software, so I can't hit the emojis regardless. Really annoying. Funko Fusion, never heard of it. Very minor words get censored. I know it's silly, isn't it? It's still better than Twitch though. Twitch's culture is just absolutely revolting. If I wanted to um, go onto a website and watch the gameplay of Valorant green screened on a booby streamer's ass, I would definitely be going to Twitch, but that would get real old real fast because the reason I would be going there is to watch Valorant gameplay. And if you can't see like the HUD or the gameplay or anything other than ass cheeks, probably uh, the novelty would wear off real fast for me personally, I would say. I, 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 I would probably stop watching after maybe like 20 minutes, probably for different reasons as well than everyone else not watching after 20 minutes. I would just be all like, oh, that's that's clever, but, you know, I'm, I'm bored. I'm really, really bored. I'm bored of everything on this channel. It's the same as every single other channel on Twitch these days. 
It's a game called Funko Fusion. It includes a ton of IPs and a multiverse story, including FNAF John Carpenter's The Thing. What the hell? What? That's a blend nobody asked for or expected. I'm surprised I made that jump, actually. What do you mean The Thing and FNAF? I suppose they share an audience. The Thing is an awesome film. God, I love it. It's such a good film. All right, uh, that's still too poorly oriented. That's better. Uh, I'm actually going to move these over just one slot so that it recesses into the uh, giant granite slab that we already have naturally. Get over, go ahead, get this construction hammer, lift that one up, put that back. Lift this, put it there. And now we can start padding out the rest of the workshop. Put that there. Why are these filtering? Oh, it's because we still don't have any core stone, do we? Right. So the sorting system is a little bit defunct. Let's go ahead and turn this whole thing off like so. Good. We'll see if we can't find any core stone along here. I don't think there will be any. We're probably going to have to go back to the MILF's aquifer and see if we can't just like snipe one off of the conveyor belt, to be quite honest. In fact, let's do that right now so that the sorting system is just done and dusted. We don't have to worry about it anymore whatsoever. This is that's a pretty good idea. I love it. It looks so fun. Its gameplay changes up constantly, but at its core, it's a third-person puzzle roguelite. Ah, third person. That would probably also insinuate an annoying amount of platforming, to be quite honest. I'm more of a uh, stupid shotgun ape when it comes to my third-person games. Like, Assassin's Creed is really, really fun. And of course, there's uh, always like the Gears of War type games and Division stuff. But uh, every time a third person game introduces platforming, I'm just like, eh, I have to be in a very specific mood for this. And then even if I'm in the mood for it, I'll just play lasers. Like, it's as simple as that, because it's just third person parkour. Hi, hello there, I do stuff. Okay, we'll go all the way up this ladder. And then we're off to the MILF's aquifer. We're going to try and snipe a piece of core stone off of the conveyor belt down south. Hopefully, that'll get us in good. I don't think anything's really going to go wrong with it, though, to be quite honest. Let's go down here. I think we're going to jump into Satan's suck hole. It's just all the way down here, and then it's that tiny little uh, nipple of a hole right over here. And let's go. Let's see what's down here. Is this where we want to be? Most certainly is. Great. All right. I actually see some right now. Boom. Oh, damn it. Uh, there's heaps of core stone here. Like that one. Perfect. All right, we've got some core stone ore. That's fantastic. Let's turn that back on. And then we'll get over here and we'll just go back up the conveyor belt because it's convenient. Look at all the ores on this thing. This is crazy. Wowee. We might want to turn this off, actually, because it might be the thing that's dipping the frames as well as Ice Helm, too. Okay, good. So now that we got some core stone, this is the last piece of the puzzle of the sorting system until we get to the gems, which we realistically should be thinking about just setting up now anyway. I don't know if we've got any elbow pipes, but they would come in really handy for what we're about to do. I'm kind of using um, a strategy called ADD to uh, juggle a bunch of the kind of chores that we should probably be on top of by now. So this will be the last of the sorting system. Boing! And we landed. Nice. Let's go ahead, come over here, jump over this, jump over here, and we'll B-hop over yonder's breadth to this here machine. I think it's like split... Jesus, that is a big chunk. I think it's like 50-50 splitting the electric stuff between going in there and just like continuing onwards, which sucks. Okay, now we want to clear all raw resources, get rid of all of that yucky electric stuff. Now we're going to turn on our sorting machine and also our grinder. No coincidence. Wonderful. Okay, so we got a bunch of gems here. We want a gem machine right here. And then we want a gap. We want a gap with a straight conveyor on it. Let's go ahead and just pad out the rest of the shop floor then, I suppose. Put one there. Get another one. Put it there. Nice. Another one there. Very good. And another one just over here. Perfect. And another one just over here. I don't even mind that we're losing a couple of pipes inside of these uh, giant slabs. Absolutely fine. Put that one there so we don't get stuck in that corner. Uh, that one can go recessed into the machine. This one's going to go way off into the corner. I know it's a bit of a waste, but it looks better. Let's go ahead and uh, actually drop this. We can move this lever out of the way. Put it here so it doesn't go up the filtration machine that will dump into the back of the van. 
go ahead and jam that one down there. Very nice. And we'll probably close over this one. I wonder if this has changed anything. It has not. This actually still functions. That's awesome. Great. Uh, I'm going to stick another one just over here then, if that's the case. Right there. Awesome. Nice. It's gameplay changes quite a bit. One moment it would be like a Souls, like another would be a first person shooter. What the hell? That's so strange. Although I really do kind of like multi-genre games because it pisses off the wider community to no end. And I find that absolutely hilarious. All right, factory floor is actually looking pretty good now. Uh, let's go ahead and start planning out the piping. So we need a pipe here. No, here. That will be a straight conveyor. So let's go ahead and just put a straight conveyor on there. Whoop, there we go. Just in case we forget, it's facing the wrong way. Put that there. And we'll hook it up after we kind of have the sorting system set up. So one machine, two machine. We need a, like five right bends, don't we? What is this one? A left splitter. Is this going the way we want it to? Actually, it is. That's exactly the orientation we want. So we're going to go ahead and stick this one on the other oh. end of here. So we'll go ahead and we'll get a... Actually, this one shouldn't be a straight, should it? This should be a T-junction, because we also want to filter into the... Where are they? Where are they? They're all way over here. These, right here. These gem compressors. So, these are going to pipe in like this. There's a little pipe right there, and out the back is going to be the logic circuitry. So, we want the pipes to come downwards. All right, good. We'll put this one... Here? No, we don't want that one there. That should be a straight... No, we definitely want that there because we want a pipe to come up and then around from here. Okay, let's try and find a couple of elbows if we need to. I'm gonna get rid of these. Uh, actually, let's place these before we forget. Let's place them up here so that we can actually access our infrastructure up top. And I'm getting the lumps kind of on the top so that we can kind of gauge distance using these as well. Pretty handy. Pretty handy skill to have. Put one there. Another one just up over here. Good. Yes! Yes, yes! What's a ga good game you could recommend? The number of Black Plague I could recommend? It's pretty good, actually. It is really, really good. Uh, it's real jank, though. The combat is fiddly and not worth doing. I haven't played it, but I have it. It's my favorite game by Frictional Games. They've got a lot of pretty good games. Gotta be said. I can't wait to play The Bunker. Although that one's gonna be a wee ways away. Probably. It's probably gonna be a, be a, a wee ways away, realistically. All right, let's go ahead and not put this one up here. Let's go ahead and shut down the sorting system so we can replace this big slab with one single slab. And then we won't drop gems all over the place. Right. Take this bucket, drop it up there. Good. And I'm going to pick this up. And this is going to just go down here, I think. Right there. Excellent. And we want that one block right here. Right there so that we can put that bucket on it. And that's all we want. That's all we want right here. It's gonna whoops that's not good all right excellent let's go ahead and turn this back on done excellent i lied machine for pigs is my favorite i still haven't played that one that's the next one i'm gonna be getting to but it might be a while before i get to it for a for a hot minute okay so that's gonna be a sorting system that's gonna be a sorting system so we're gonna need a that should be a straight pipe this one should be a t-junction to filter into Another one of these Watson Madingles right here, which we'll just place down so we don't forget. Right there, yes. Okay, so let's get rid of this conveyor belt and we gotta move this pipe right here to go over this. And now we need a T junction. Where are we gonna find T junctions? Probably on this card of T junctions. Excellent, so right here, we want this to face forward, I think. Because if we ever go and we can have all of the wires just go right behind all of these things using T-junctions. So I think if we have the hydro pipes coming up here, we can elbow one ahead of here and then down and into these machines with two more elbow pipes. So we're probably gonna need a bunch of elbows for this. I'm not sure if we actually have enough elbows for this. Uh, like that, that's what we want right there. And now we're gonna need another elbow to bump right into that's not helpful. There. Done. So this is now more or less hydro, hydro powered, hydrogeneered. This one also needs a T-pipe in front of it. Let's go ahead and get a T-pipe. 
Now that we know the pattern, we can actually just set these up really, really easily. So I'm probably going to do a straight, then snake around and finish off the sorting system right after. Okay, good. Put that one there. It's going to be kind of tricky to get there with the mezzanine floor in the way, but it should be absolutely fine regardless. Uh, that can go right there as well. Continue on the... Continue it along. There's a T-pipe right here. Let's go ahead and drop that on the floor. We need two straights. That's probably a straight. Yep. Put that one there. We need an elbow to curve it. Right here. Well, I can't believe that was already in the right orientation. It's pretty cool. I like Soma. Oh, Soma was really good, actually. It was scary, but it was really, really good. I loved Soma. Soma was god tier. Put that one there. Maybe we should push it out further one that way. I'm going to do that, actually. Let's, let's go ahead and do exactly what I just said. Because we want to conserve the space as best as we can, and we can kind of bump into that, that hill there with the, the space that we have. Good. This one has to go sideways. Excellent. So that is one, two, and then it's going to be a third. We could put a third one here. I don't think it's nice. Mm. I'm doing it. I'm actually going to do it. I'm making the executive decision. We're going to put a T-pipe right here, and then we are going to bump in another gem compressor right here. So let's go ahead and bring one of those over. I know the flying gen compressors are a little bit weird to look at, but we will fix that eventually. Good. So we'll pipe into that one there. That's going to be three of them. And then the rest of them are going to filter around. Uh, this one, uh, we don't want that right there. We probably actually want to move that over just one more so that we can access it. We don't have to go into the corner to do so. And we'll put this one like that. So it's going to be... One, two, three, four, and we need one more. We need one more of these bad boys. Yeah, let's get a straight, a single straight, because that's an, that's an elbow. That's not what we need. We need this straight right here. I think we're out of straight pipes as well, which is pretty impressive. And we probably just need an elbow right at the end. We probably don't need a straight, because we're not going to continue on the circuit. Uh, this one here needs to kind of go this way. Yep, perfect. Then we're going to get another few elbows, and we're going to stick them on the end of here, just like that. I think we're out of elbows as well. We're probably going to have to go and get more pipes. Let's place down these other two logic compressors first. We've almost finished the sorting system, by the way. We've completely almost finished it, which is just fantastic. Done. And one more. Right here, the one flying in the sky, the highest, goes right there. Okay, perfect. Right, so we need a lot of elbows, and we probably actually don't need any more straights hilariously, but we'll get some anyway. Just because they're useful to have, and we're going to need to expand out the, the productive enterprise regardless. Ooh. I am yet to play Soma? Scott, really? It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a really good story. It's a really, really good story. I found it a little bit predictable because I'm kind of the kind of guy that reads a lot of literature that Soma is inspired by anyway, so... I kind of picked up all of the early signs on the plot real early into the game. First, like, 15 minutes kind of kind of early into the game. But the horror is genuinely terrifying. There's no way of doing combat, and you actually do have to sneak around a lot of gigantic monstrosities. I'm not going to spoil what they are either, because they're kind of integral to the story. Uh, let's get a bunch of straights right at the end of here, simply because we want to be able to access them real easy and i think right at the front of the card is just the first place that we look these days for the straights good excellent and then we'll get a bunch of elbows on the back of here as well i actually haven't played fully guys you gotta play soma i'll do it on the channel at some point it's, it's really good it's a really really good one it's very pretty too uh, I found it very scary on account of the whole game taking place underwater, which isn't a spoiler. That's not a spoiler. It's not a spoiler whatsoever. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll get these elbows next. I kind of want to bugger. That's not going to work. Uh, all right, let's stick that one there. I'm actually going to turn this card around and then we'll just kind of like drop it right onto that corner right there, I think. Too far. Okay, we need to stand further back on the car. Like there. Damn it, we lost it. Oh no. We want it to kind of like fall on the on the edge, because this is the only kind of pipe that can do that. Okay, good. We got it finally. Three and four. 
I feel like you need a billion elbows. Every time you make one of these circuits, you, you literally need like a billion elbows. I don't know why, but the, the best utility pipe in the game, gotta be said, which is even weirder to say right next to the T-pipe as well, because the T-pipe is basically just an elbow anyway, but I kind of like it nice and clean. I like, I like looking at a nice and clean circuit. And I'm pretty sure everybody watching this as well, for the purpose of watching it, also wants to see a nice clean circuit. It also doesn't sound like ass. Alright, let's go. Whoops, dropped one. Hello? Where'd it go? There it is. Don't wanna don't wanna lose them. Boom. Good. I also had a crack at Dead Space. I'm not entirely sure if anybody saw me playing Dead Space. There was a bit of an issue with it. I started the new game plus and I found that you don't actually get access to all of the kind of like master security cards that you you had in the previous game which i get that it would kind of like break the flow of the game but it's new game plus you're supposed to be able to break the flow of the game i mean if there's a secret non-canon ending at the end of it why wouldn't they allow you to just break the the flow of gameplay regardless just to have fun just to speed run the game you also have to sit through every cutscene, which sucks i hate that so much forced cutscenes are absolutely just a redundant thing in gaming these days regardless new game plus is fun for dead space yeah it is it is fun when you get to actually play it but sitting through all of the lore and the cutscenes that we've already seen that's not fun also losing all of the security uh cards and stuff that's not fun either because i actively started the next game thinking oh well if we're just gonna go back um through all those areas with all the security clearance we had we're just gonna find all of the uh, kind of like upgrades for the guns regardless and no they don't give you any security clearance whatsoever so you have to play the entire game from scratch again which um i, I gotta say is probably a, a bad decision it was a really bad decision okay let's go ahead and plug these in that way good one and we need another one over here good that's two we need a third one whoops good and now we need to line in this one nice Okay, so this one's gonna have to be a bend as well. So we're gonna need four left splitters and we're probably gonna need a bunch more of these stray conveyors if we don't have enough to kind of like finish off the sorting system. Let's actually make sure we have enough first. Okay, that goes there. And this one goes there. Just heard a water filter get repaired. That's pretty cool. Excellent, uh, I'll drop this one over here and i hope nothing's gonna get caught we also need a bend we need we need a bendy splitter what's this left conveyor is that the orientation well it is actually that's exactly what we need crazy wow uh it'll go this way done i hope that's done yep that's done and now we just need a couple more conveyors one here we need one more conveyor as well we need one more straight conveyor we have actually run out I've only played the original version, you, and you can skip cutscenes just fine in that version. Yeah, they you actively cannot skip a single cutscene in the remake. It's a, it, it's a real shame. Got to be said, because it really does kind of break the fun of New Game Plus. Okay, so that shouldn't be straight. That should actually be a splitter. So we have one spear. I'm just going to drop that over there. Uh, yeah, we, so we need four more left splitters. One, two... What the hell's going on here? Do we? Oh yeah, this one too. One, two, three, and four left splitters. Gotcha. Okay, let's take the... Probably this card with the electrical... Where's the card with the electrical stuff in it? Where'd it go? I'm sure we had three cards. Maybe we didn't. Maybe I'm... Oh, there it is. It's behind this. Excellent. Uh, now that we've got the cable one, let's go ahead and get ourselves a few more of these splitters. We're probably never going to need to buy another splitter again, by the way. We're probably just going to need to get the... Uh, the sorting system set up, and then we should just be able to plug and play all of the excess machines that we're just going to stick on the circuit right next to each other, too. Good, good. Come up here, and... Should be good. I'm still kind of riding on the tail coats of that cold I had uh, last Friday, by the way. I thought it had dissipated, but as it turns out, I was just eating lozenges like candy, so I felt a lot better. I haven't actually gotten any better. Uh, now that we're here, let's go ahead and move this over to the conveyors so we can buy the conveyors we need. Let's put that right there, and we're going to need 
Four of these left splitters. I don't think we're going to need anything else. One, two, three. Ah! Uh, except for maybe some electrical equipment. Probably going to need more electrical equipment so we can set up the kind of logic circuit for the, the gem compressors. All right, let's buy that. Two grand. That's absolutely fine and dandy. Remember when that was an issue? Remember when two grand was lots of money? When we were out with our brush and pan? And now here we are. Literally, uh, oh, what was his name? I don't want to say Rupert Murdoch. I don't think it's him. The, the oil guy from There Will Be Blood. Daniel Day-Lewis. No, that's the actor. Uh, Rothschild. I think his name was Roth Rothschild or something like that. Okay, I'm just going to drop this here because we don't actually want that cart anywhere near the uh, work area anymore. Especially after we... Did I screw this up? No, I did not. Especially after we actually get the sorting system set up because we're not going to need any electrical engineering in this end. Whoops. Don't want to throw those off the edge. That'd suck. Good. And one more here. Perfect. Actually, we didn't really need a splitter there, did we? So we could probably just... I mean, now that we've got a splitter... It probably doesn't matter too much, right? All right, so... Now we need some gems. Let's get this ruby right here. Ruby goes there! I think the emerald should be the first one in the chain, and then sapphire... No. Sapphire is the second rarest, so let's put the ruby over here. Whoops, I'm actually getting hit by the mezzanine floor. Right there, that's where ruby goes. Perfect. Sapphire. And go right here. Nice. And I... I think there was onyx and nothing more was there yeah there's an onyx right here let's go ahead and jam this one into the sorter over here oh we could have actually no we couldn't have because we wouldn't have been able to pipe in the um the water from above but we probably don't need that last little section in the chain we could probably actually just get away with getting rid of that entirely which we probably end up will end up doing to be quite fair uh, we also have another one of these left splitters, which we just... We've got too many of those now. Pretty funny. Good, good. So, what do we got? We got some straight cables. We got some T-junctions. We're probably a little bit short on these, unfortunately. But we should be able to place them regardless. All right, let's put that one... That should be an elbow, actually. So we'll put this one not there. That is a straight. We'll put that there. And what have we got next? We have a T-junction. That's good. That can go right here perfect and what's next another t-junction perfect let's go behind these machines uh plug this one in oops there excellent good let's go get some more cabling and we'll cable in the rest of it what's this one another t-junction nice i also saw the spear t-junction that will allow us to connect out that last one too right so the reason I got a last splitter is in case there's like a patch in the game that just kind of adds another utility because free patches for this game have come out very consistently. Okay, let's go over here, jump over here, put that one right there, I think. We're going to need a few more straights. I don't think we have enough straights to finish the circuit though, unfortunately. We've got a T-junction. We only got one more st uh, straight and an elbow. Okay, we are definitely going to need to buy some more of these cablings. Uh, fortunately, we've got the elbow, so we can actually patch in that corner right there. Oh, no, we can't. We still need straights to lead into the corner itself. All right. All right, game. If that's how you want to play it, fine. Huh. Why would they remove that of all things? Why, why would they remove what? Sorry, I still got sick brain. All right, we don't need that. Uh, this ladder can... Actually, there's a couple of these. Probably don't need these ladders whatsoever. Let's go ahead and just jam them on the floor over in the section of the workshop that we're not using. And what else have we got? So we got an elbow, we got a T-junction. I'm just going to place this one down. We're going to need another elbow as well. Okay, one more this way. We actually need to... Oh, we... Oh, piss. That's really bad. That's really annoying. We can't actually stick the cabling through there. Which means we're going to need another two elbows for this alone. And we're going to have to move the machinery around oh that's such a pain in the ass actually oh i hate that i hate that i hate that i mean we could actually theoretically just move one of these machines over one so that we kind of can link in and it probably should be this one because this one's the one blocking the chain that we need access to 
So if we remove this one, all of them kind of filter over here, and then the circuit's complete anyway. I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, let's just do that. Uh, let's dump that over there, because we don't actually need it just yet. We don't need that to be a T-junction. We need that to be a straight junction. We don't need these elbows right here. And we most certainly do not need that to be a T-junction. So this can be a straight pipe, which we have plenty of now. Put that there. We'll put this back on like so. So that's the oars pretty much set up. Good. Now let's elbow down through to here. Hello, the King of Spiders. Also, what's up with the other live stream? That was a fail. Um, my ISP sandbagged me because they wanted me to pay three weeks early and they didn't communicate anything to me. Um, so they choked out my internet. New Zealand, uh, New Zealand is full of companies that don't know what the hell they're doing. So it should really not surprise anybody who lives in New Zealand. There are so many utility companies who are just, like, necessary to New Zealand functioning, but they're just really... Everybody who works for them... Well, maybe not everybody who works for them. Frontline stuff are usually pretty good. But everybody uh, who kind of works at the back end of these companies get real lazy and they only work their wage and they're not really interested whenever something goes wrong. That's just another problem that they have to deal with, which makes it the customer's problem. So, uh, it's just how New Zealand works, unfortunately. Um, no one really wants to do any um, solid work at their jobs anymore if they, if they leave Frontline. So we got sandbagged. We got sandbagged by the automated system of a company because they refused to communicate uh, anything with us. Right, so coming up here... Everything looks pretty much in place. I know this looks a little bit ugly, but it will function. It will function really, really well. Oh, that's right. We're also going to stick another one here, so we probably don't even need that end one whatsoever anyway. I'm going to leave this one over here, and then we're going to dismantle this end bit here. We definitely don't need this. We'll just plug it in. In case there's another ore that is added to the game, we will just plug these in, because we don't necessarily need them. The word need is not really in the vocabulary of what we're using this for right now. Uh, so if we unplug this, yes, 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 good, and we unplug this one and we replace that with an elbow, which we have lying on the ground right beside us, and we plug that in right there, very, very good, and we don't actually need another conveyor belt, we, we just don't, although, let's remove these two because we can replace that with an elbow as well, so this T-junction can go probably where that bucket is. I know we've made a little bit of a mess right now, but we'll clean it up. Don't worry. We'll, we'll clean everything up. Go drop that bad boy right there. And now we take a look at the mess we've made. I kind of want to extend this out by one, just because it looks a little bit too messy, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, four, four gems. Do we want to move this out one? I kind of want to. I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think I'll do it. I think I will. I mean, it is kind of like a, a bit of a crap layout. We probably could have planned a lot of this better, but we're just like a block away from where we need all of this stuff to be. Oh, well, it'll work for now. I don't remember why I put a splitter over there either. Uh, Ruby, Sapphire. So, if we turn this off, we can actually hook up the... Sorting system now, because we've got all the pieces. We have all of the pieces. Go ahead, drop that on the ground. And we'll replace that block right there with a piece of cabling. We probably have the cabling for it, unless we still need more elbows. In which case, would be very annoying. Uh, I'm going to put a T-junction behind here so that we can also cable in a lever of some sort. Good, that's all cabled in. And we want an elbow to come around here so that we can access a lever, which may block off this um, kind of bucket of crap that we don't necessarily want but that's not a bad thing we don't actually care about that whatsoever we could also potentially move all of these over by one we don't this doesn't have to be a corner in fact that might be a good idea as well we'll do that we'll do that okay so we're gonna need some more cabling we're gonna need an elbow we're gonna need where are the others we've got a straight over here we could probably actually put this down somewhere Probably like here, and then we'll stick an elbow, two elbows here and here, so that that all links up. I think it's going to be a good idea. And then we need another elbow to elbow into here. So one, two elbow, three elbows, 
Four elbows. We're going to need four elbows. All right, let's go ahead and buy four elbows. We're going to have to go into town for this, though. We're going back for it. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Okay, we're at the end game, by the way. Once we have the sorting system set up, we're just going to be absolutely uh, creaming the frame rate, which I think is the objective of this game. Just to break it. All right, we've got to save. That's pretty good. It would be nice if there was like an elevator that you could take out of this place from the mine rather than... Oh, I suppose I could just put the... You know what? It's still actually going to be faster to do so from here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go back down to the mine because I can just sprint back up the staircases and that's way faster. We are going to go ahead and we're going to drop the cart on this bad boy. Huh? Please? Huh? Huh? Ah. Or maybe we won't because you can't do it. <laughs> ah, well, knowledge is power. At least we know that we have to manually go up all the stairs with these carts regardless. Failure is still discovery. It's an Einstein quote. You can quote that one if you want. You'll sound smarter as well. Einstein was a pretty smart guy. He knew how to do math and such. I trust him. I trust him. A quotable guy as well. Eureka! Don't know, even I don't even know what the hell that means. Like, I know what it's supposed to insinuate, but I, <laughs> I don't know what the hell it means. Or why people even use it in the first place. We should probably get ourselves a cart to kind of like cart things to and fro from the city as well. Maybe would be a good idea. But that's it's probably not necessary now. Because once we get the sorting system set up, we're not going to leave Ice Helm unless we're going to the DLC. Oh, please don't go. Yes, we just caught it. Very good. Okay, we're going all the way up the elevator here. Perfect. I'm going to drop the cart in the back of the truck right here. Right here. Good. Yes, 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 yes. And we're in. Perfect. So we need four elbows minimum, and I don't think we needed anything else. I think we only needed the elbows, necessarily. So let's go over this hill. Um, I don't really care if I crash into anything either, because the truck doesn't seem to take damage. Oh, perfect. We've rolled it onto a tree, which just gives us more opportunity to do some breakdancing in the truck. Nice. Let's go over this hill right here, because it's a pretty straight shot to the town. Yes, 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 yes. And we rolled it again. Perfect. <laughs> it's not stopping us from going forward, though. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this game is ridiculous. Okay, now that we're here, let's go up and we'll go into the logic systems. Just up this hill and make it right. Perfect. Great. And I think once we set up the sorting system, we're going to go and we're going to start trying to get a bunch of... Oh, what are they called? Um, machines. We're going we're gonna to start crafting machines. We're going to go to the MILFs Aquifer. We should have accrued a heap of resources over there by now. We only need four of these as well, so I'm just going to grab four. Two and three and four. Beautiful. Sorry, I was about to sneeze. And we'll put this back on the car. No, we'll pay. We'll actually pay for this first. Because otherwise we don't get to keep the items. Yippee! What's yippee? Oh, you're back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead, take this money. We should probably just leave it here, right? I'll leave it outside the bucket so that we know it's here next time we come here. I mean, this is probably the only place that we'll actually come back to. This uh, logic selling area. Logic seller, I require your strongest logic. You can't handle my strongest logic. It is too powerful for you. Man, that's a throwback. Back when photo booth was a thing. Okay, uh, we'll round this corner, and then I think we're just going to off-road up the hill. Oop, just took a huge knock. That's going to give us a bit of whiplash, which we can subsidize our income with. A little bit of, little bit of whiplash. How the hell are we making it up that hill? That's insane. I literally cannot believe we are, we're doing that. Whoops. I disabled my mic so I could do a sniffle. So you guys don't have to do it. Don't have to don't have to experience the sniffle. And I ended up hitting the wrong button. Okay, good. We'll go back down to Ice Helm, into the uh, dungeon, the basement. Boing. Who's gonna win? Ah, uh, it's us. I thought that the counterweights might actually have beaten us down the 
done the hole, but it turns out it was actually us that won. Uh, I'm just going to jump off this ledge right here. Boop. Excellent. Uh, I'm also very surprised I landed that. I'm getting very good at this game. Let's go ahead and drop this here, and we'll start elbowing all of the other... <laughs> Man, what a mess. <laughs> we have made an absolute mess down here. Uh, this one can go like that. Perfect. And we need another one of these. That's a teat. That's the only other thing that we have in the card. We don't need it. Let's go ahead and put this one right there. Very good. Oh, we turned off the, um, we turned everything off. So we can actually take this cork out. Wonderful. And now we want to put a conveyor down here, which needs to be a straight pipe. We've got a straight pipe, don't we? The hell? Yeah, we do. Right here. Good. Put that right there. And now we need a single conveyor, which is right here to face the right way as well. Let's put that there. And now it should be Hunky Dory. Wait, no, that's not supposed to be a straight. That's supposed to be a splitter, which is right there. Okay, let's go ahead and just put this in storage, I suppose. Uh, right there. Done. And this one is going in. The right orientation, though. Good. Perfect. So we'll put that one there. And now we need a emerald so that we can stick it on that sorting system. I took a huge one, by the way. Huge trophy emerald. That goes right there. These are all going to drop into the... We can actually probably just set this to fire and, and forget, right? We just turn this on. It's just going to start filtering everything that we need anyway. Yep, perfect. So we could probably also take this bucket and just drop it onto the conveyor system over here now. Uh, I'm going to do it right in front of the hook centralizer. There we go. Done. It's going to go through the gem polish. It. It's not going to do anything, though. Where are they? There can't be them. Surely that's not... No, that was just a bunch of crap. Just a bunch of crappy electricity stuff. Here we go. Here comes the gems. Here's the emeralds. Whee! And here's the uh, sapphires. Now the rubies. Well, that's embarrassing. I forgot to put the machine down. That's right. That's why we were piping this in with elbows. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, that needs to be a T junction right there. Let's go ahead and put this as a T junction. Right. Oh my god, move. R actually, it needs to be right there. Whoops, probably shouldn't have been so hard on it. There we go, put that there. Now we need to elbow in from here, which fortunately we can do. We just can't go one more outwards. Put that there. Uh, this one, I'm going to move all these rubies out of the way. Oh no, more rubies are coming. Good, put all of those there. And now we need the gem compressor. Where are you, buddy? Where's the gem compressor? There's one right there. This will do the trick nicely right here put that there oh we need to move that don't we because that will not function as intended because we can't get the um we can't pipe the water in from there and we can't stick the oh actually we kind of can stick the circuit back over there we just can't the hell yeah it's not it's not going anywhere unless what if we hook it onto like a straight pipe here? Would that, would that cut the cheese? Uh, no, it will not. It'll it'll go like fully into the dirt. It just won't do anything else. Hello, any theory videos down the pipeline? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna beat Sands and we're gonna go find all of the Easter eggs in Undertale, and then I've got a huge like hour and a half long theory scripted for that which is going to take a long time to come out, unfortunately, just because it's so big. It's such a huge timeline that I've created. It's also very original, too. I was poking around about what uh, other people are saying the plot is. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of people on the internet when it comes to the plot, because they're all kind of hinging most of the theories in Undertale on a bunch of plot points that were never confirmed in the first place. So it's like they've built a mansion on top of um, a sand pit, essentially. Sassamunga? I have no idea what that means. Yeah, so that's not going to work because we need the water to come down and in, which means we need that free. So we're actually going to need to expand this out regardless of how we feel about it. Ah, that sucks. That sucks ass. Unless... No, we can't, like, flip it around because we still need to give it electrical access as well, unfortunately. Righty-ho. So this can go there. It's going to have to go there because... Um, can't really stick it any closer into the line, unfortunately. So that's got to go like that. I don't really care about the rubies falling on the ground anymore. Why is this one out? Who knows? Let's put this in storage right here. 
Uh, right there. Pretty good. Excellent. And now we are going to... Wow, I've really made a dog's breakfast of this. Why have I moved this other one? Doesn't make any sense. What crack am I smoking? Uh, yeah, so we need that one right there. I'm going to move that gem out of the way so I can actually place it. There we go. Put that in there. Boop. And now this one is active. That is the emerald. This one should not be on the line whatsoever. So we're going to get rid of that one. We're going to replace it with a straight if we can. In fact, we can actually move all of this like slightly inwards, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do that right this second. Put that there. This one here, we know exactly what orientation the pipe's going to go in. So we know exactly which orientation the machine's going to go in. Good. We'll put this over here. And go ahead and jam that one into the system. This one is the Onyx splitter. Not interested in it being where it is. I'm going to move it slightly closer to the work area. I uh, can't put that one there. I'm going to put this one... There, this one has to come in one. And it has to go kind of like, yeah, like that. This has to go there. That's backwards. Good. Now I'm going to put this onyx. No, I'm actually going to stick the ruby in that one. So now that that's there, we need a straight conveyor, which we have right here. Perfect. I'm going to face this way. Let's go ahead and get this splitter with the ruby on it. And we are going to stick it right there. So all the rubies filter off into this one. I kind of like ordering them by rarity. And I'm just going to jam all of them in there. Because I know exactly what's going to happen as soon as we turn this machine on. It's going to compress them all. Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and plug that in with the elbow pipe right there. Very good. Uh, we're actually also going to disconnect this one. And we're going to replace it with a T-junction right here. Uh... Yep, and we're going to move this one one block forward. Just give ourselves a little bit less room to work with, I think. Great! Uh, let's go ahead and get a T-junction here as well, because we need one. Where is the pipe cart? It's way over there. That's fine. T-junction! Excellent. And I'm going to stick with this one. Flip it and stick it there. That one... Oh, we probably should have used that one instead, right? We don't need that to be a T-junction. What's with it? In fact, we don't we don't want any more T-junctions on the line. That's a T-junction. We need a straight pipe. Perfect, right there. Gonna go ahead and jam that right there. This can elbow downward. No. Sideways. We want it thematically consistent. And I'm just gonna put that one in there and we'll plug this machine in down here. Like. So! Perfect! Great! Now, all of these should be virtually hooked up. We just need to put the conveyor belts in. It's the wrong way. Let's face it this way. Stick it there. This one wants to be onyx, which is perfect. Uh, all of these are piped in. Yep, four machines all piped in. Perfect. That, why is that a T-junction? That makes no sense. We need an elbow to be able to filter over this away. Let's go ahead and flip it that way. Now we need another elbow, which is why we bought so many of them gonna need this one to filter outwards because we can't oh we can stick it that way okay we're gonna stick that there this can be a straight which is actually gonna make things significantly easier for us we don't have a straight oh no oh yes we do there's one right here perfect uh whack that right there good and i'm going to take this elbow and drop it elsewhere we do need a couple of straights, which we don't have, unfortunately. Virtually hooked up? It is virtually hooked up, isn't it? It's pr it's practically functional. Actually, I should probably get a conveyor belt on there in case it starts just ejaculating onyx all over the floor. Let's go ahead and do that. Right here. Face it the right way. And right. I'm pixel hunting. Right there. Good. So that's the entire sorting system functionally set up. We just need a few more of these. Okay, we can actually stick a bunch of T-junctions down here. It doesn't actually matter. That's an elbow. We can elbow in this last one. Good. Then we're just going to use the T-junctions we already have to kind of bridge the gap in between. Oh, perfect. This one needs a T-junction anyway. And this one right here. Very good. Going to stick that right 
there with some el electrical cables facing the water supply. That's probably a recipe for disaster, but you know, that's not my issue anymore. Put that there. We also need a lever. Gonna whack that bad boy. Hopefully on it. Yes, good. What does this do? Did this do anything? Okay, good. We can now turn off all of these compressor systems. They are eating. They are not eating. Okay, and they'll open. When something filters in, though, I also want it to compress. So let's go over here and just see if this functions as intended. So that's going to split off the emerald. It's going to drop it into the logic compressor, which will not compress unless we have this lever on. Okay. Good to know. Good to know indeed. All of these are functional now. I think all the rubies have been compressed. Yes, very nice. Yeah, everything is now hooked up and working. I do also want to move all of the uh, smelters over one, though. So before we go ahead and get distracted with something else, let's do that. Uh, we're going to need our building hammer, aren't we, to kind of unlodge them. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. Which means we're also going to have to move these splitters, which work virtually the same as this corner. So we don't need this corner whatsoever. W playlist. This is the uh, most recent try not to bop challenge, by the way. This isn't a this isn't a playlist. This is an album. It's Sonic Temple by the Cult. It's this week's try not to bop. If you've been on the Discord, you'll know the try not to bop challenge. If you can sit through the entire um, album that I post there and you didn't once enjoy it, you win. You win the challenge. So you know uh, the only the only winners, uh, <laughs> quite frankly, the losers. <laughs> The, the party poopers, the wet black. What the hell? Oh my god! Wealth beyond measure, Outlander. Uh, we need the magnet on a stick, don't we? Let's go ahead and grab this. Let's get all of this wealth out of there. Yes, that'll do. Uh, good, 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 good. A couple of ingots are trying to get a little bit freaky with me, but I think it's fine. Alright, let's get up here, make sure that they're actually going to filter into where we need them to filter into. I'm pretty sure they will. I'm pretty sure they'll just go into the place we want them to go into. Go ahead and just centralize them on the on the conveyor belt a little bit better than they are. Uh, that's even worse. That's actually way worse. Okay, that should be perfect. Nice! Let's go ahead and put that back. And now we want to grab these ingots, move them out of the way. Like that and that. Get all these other ingots out of the way as well. Four stone, gold, and iron. And then we're going to move them. Just one block over, like so. Perfect. That'll give us a little bit more room to work with the logic system if we ever need to. And it's also less congested too, so it's 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 going to work out in our favor. Uh, it shouldn't remove the item that it should split from when we move these. Uh, that can go in the bucket, quite frankly. Don't really care about it too much. This goes over here. I bopped. Don't know how to spell it. B-O-P-P-E-D. You'll never forget the pee-pee. Never forget the pee-pee. That's an important part. That is good, though. That is kind of like the whole point of the Try Not To Bop Challenge. It's just um, an opportunity for me to share really, really, really good music around with uh, people who just like my channel in the first place. All right, good. The first one was Hollywood Undead's... Um, oh, what was it? California with a K. No! Oh, the magnet and the stick. It, it's not... It's It's volatile. Oh my god, if I if I wanted everything to go this wrong and I'd invest in uh in GameStop. Come on. What are you doing? Alright, put all that over there. Probably could have done with splitting off the let's actually just do housekeeping. We'll keep that on the stand at all times. Let's get all these uh, ingots out of this bucket. Good. And we'll put them back in when we need to. This one's next. This one whoops. I think I just dropped whatever was on it. I hope not though. No, I did not. Perfect. And this one right here can go there. Now we need one single straight conveyor belt, which we do have just over yonder's breadth. Over here. Very good. Jam this one into the system and what is the right orientation, right? Yep. Perfect. Excellent. Nice. All of the things are on there. I'm actually, because I don't know whether or not placing items down like over and over again, I don't know if it will kind of like fiddle with the actual sorting system of the machine. So we'll just place them down to be, to be safe regardless. It's always, it's always safest to be safe. I put that there. Uh, the mezzanine floor is, uh, we're kind of hitting our head on it now, which is a, a little bit annoying. 
And put this one back down. Boop. Good. Okay, that should be purely functional. We'll go ahead and turn on everything, which we can actually do from the side if we pixel hunt a little bit. Great. Let's go ahead and put this one in where it belongs. This one is core stone. That belongs in there. That is Clautium. That belongs in here. This one is gold. It's the second most rare. And of course, iron. Which we probably have too much of at this point. That's right, we needed to get scales too, didn't we? We didn't get any scales. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, take this bucket, and I'm going to dump it onto the sorting system. Uh, let's go over here and just dump it right in the middle so that the centralizer functions. All right, let's see if this actually works right at the... Why? This is very clearly iron. Why is it passing through that? What? Game, yeah, what? Brother, ooh! Brother, ooh! Why isn't this working? There is a weird light on here. Oh, maybe the method that I was using just doesn't work in the first place. We did kind of clean up it, though. Ah, that's annoying. I don't want, like, all of these to be bumped into the, the wall there. I think we're probably going to have to just deal with it, though. Okay. I thought it was going to look a little bit better, but it turns out it was actually just not the best idea in the world. We probably had some good ideas, and that was not one of them. Good, put that there, and this one goes over here. Then we'll just kind of set these up as we had them. I'm not going to move all of these over one. I'm just going to move this one over here to the end, like that. And now we got to move them all over one. That there. Bit of a shame, actually. I thought that maybe the splitters would function as a corner, but they don't whatsoever. Oh, something actually fell off that one as well, annoyingly. Uh, put that there and put that one there. Now we need that that corner that we had before, this one. That one, great. We've got this. I'm going to stick it on the corner right here. Oriented properly. Good. Uh, let's turn this bad boy on, even though it's a little bit more of an eyesore to deal with now. Put these back in their respective places. Uh What else have we got? Let's move this. We can actually see all the ingots immediately and just drop them in. Uh, electric stuff. Put them in there. What's this one? That is Clautium. Let's drop that in the third one. Iron goes in the first. And gold. Right here. Okay, the sorting system is set up. It took us a long time to kind of set this up. But we are working in an enclosed space. So it's not as... It's not as, as bad as it could have been, mm -hmm. honestly. Oh, can't put anything there. How about there? Good. Let's go ahead and store this in deep storage. Put this maybe on top of the gem compressor we're not going to use. There we go. And what else is there? Let's clean up. Let's have a little bit of a clean up. And then I think we're going to go and we're going to start crafting more machines. Because there should be many, many more machines to craft. Okay, that was a little bit messy, but it is what it is. Uh, let's try and stick these into the corner. Yes, perfect. One there. Whoops. No! Oh, that almost just loaded onto the back of our truck. Embarrassing. Uh, I'm going to drop that one with the other T-pipes right there. Another T-pipe here can go in the... Oh, that's ugly. That's really ugly. Uh, you know what? I'm actually just going to clear all raw resources right here. Done. Perfect. Now, let's come over here, and we will drop off our pipe cart over here. We'll do nice some housekeeping. Uh, those are our wires. Let's put the wire over here into this cart. Mm -hmm. Just drop it right there. We'll move this cart over here. Nice. Done. And now let's take the... We probably don't need the cork whatsoever. We do need some scales. I'm actually going to go up to the Ice Helm store right this second. We're going to go and buy some scales so that we know the weights of all of the items that we have, and thus, we know exactly how much we can craft. Honestly, I don't know why we don't own any scales yet anyway. It's probably a ridiculous thing to not own at this point of the game. But we'll get some. We'll get some scales. Excellent. Hello, friendo. Didn't even see him there. Where are they? Right next to the till. Perfect. It could even actually be the till. I think I just bought somebody's till. I'm surprised there's no, like... There's one thing that I always thought that this game needed, and that's skin packs. Like, even if they were paid, just getting some skins for all of the machinery around the place would be an absolute cash cow. I don't know why more people don't do that as kind of just like a base necessity. All right, uh, now that we've got this kind of workshop floor, let's go ahead and stick this there. Nope, that's backwards. Right there, perfect. 
And now I think that every time we get some ingots, we can just dump it straight onto the scales. Right, let's go ahead and test this out. Some iron. Yep, that is 2.2 tons of iron that we're just casually lifting with our hands. Now, we don't need a lot of this core stone or this clautium to start crafting the machinery. We've got 659 core stone, which I think is actually enough for a single uh, machine, at least. And we've also got this clautium, which we've got 138 kilos of. Go ahead, drop this in the bucket. We'll take this bucket over, the, over to the MILF's aquifer, and we'll kind of... I don't know, consolidate all of our resources into this one bucket. Then we'll go and we'll start making just as many drills as we possibly can. We'll see the production basically just start skyrocketing. Ice Helm is a real cash cow. And I think since we left the MILF's aquifer on for so long, it's going to be a really, really nice place to get a lot of resources from just as kind of like a, a, a base thing. I think we turned off the Ember's Cradle mine because it was just congested and all of the gems were piling up against the edge of conveyor belts, which we... It looks really, really nice to have so many gems just piled up. Don't go! Thank you. And I don't necessarily want it to pile up too hard. I think end game. we'll go into the DLC and we'll try and crash the game by, like, just having diamonds be output into a bucket. And that'll be where, basically, we've beaten the game, essentially. I'm not entirely sure if the developers are still kind of, like, adding things actively to the game. Although it's been out for four years, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of move on to another project. Or even Hydrogenia 2 would be really fun. Okay. Let's go ahead and come over here. So, what we need to do is we need to take the ingots we have, the core stone. We'll drop it in there and we'll consolidate. Boop. There we go. How heavy is this? This is uh, 3.2 thousand kilograms. Yeah, we're definitely going to be able to make a couple of machines with that. Gonna go here, grab this clautium. We're gonna drop it into the clautium right there. We'll pour it out, see how much is in here. How much have we got? We have 1.7 thousand uh, kilograms right here. That is 1.7 tons. Or, um, 3.6 billion bags of Doritos, just in case anybody here is American and doesn't know what the metric system is. That is, um,. That's that's 328 uh, wholesale bags of cheese from Costco. Approximately 800 unloaded Desert Eagles. 720 Desert Eagles if they are loaded. 740 Desert Eagles if they're loaded uh, with hollow points. There you go. Bit of math for you there, Americans. Enjoy. Uh, still kind of also want to... Grab the ingots we already had over there as well. So, what can we make? We don't need any more grinders. We only need a billion drills. Uh, I'm just going to leave this up here. Sure, why not? So, we need 500 core stone, 800... No, we need 500 cloudium, 800 core stone. I think we have just an absolute arse load here, right? We, we probably have way more than necessary. Let's drop that in there. Nice, good. And let's drop that in there. Okay, good. And now let's make a drill, hopefully. Unless it's a grinder. No, it's a drill. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and just drop these over the ledge because we can slip through the cracks right there. Probably should get the card up here just to slip a bunch of them through the cracks at once. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our materials and we'll go ahead and we'll drop them into the bucket over here. There we go. Very good. One more. Excellent. And we'll throw this in there. I wonder how many drills we'll get out of this one single endeavor. Because if we can get like five of them, then the MILF's aquifer that we set up would have absolutely paid for itself sevenfold, eightfold, twentyfold if you're American. Oops, almost just fell into the uh, the drink right there. Let's go ahead and grab this one and we will throw this one into the bucket too. I'm going to move this bucket out of the way so I stop tripping on it. And the saw, I also keep tripping on this. Uh, why is this even up here? Oh, that's right. The ingots were uh, too large when we were doing the tier two drills. They're way too big. All right, good. Got another drill. Perfect. And we'll throw this over the ledge. I think once we get these ones set up, we're probably going to want to turn off the MILF's aquifer. Because quite frankly, it is probably a bit of a drain on the FPS. And we could probably get some more effective grinds going. I right, put that there. Do we have enough? Huh? 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 No, we don't have enough. Happy at the FB my. Hey there, Happy. I remember when you were spamming the chat and we had to uh, temporarily ban you. Yeah, that was crazy. I remember that. 
Uh, let's go, kid. Oh, you're doing it again. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to take a vote. I'm, I'm literally just going to flat ban you right this second. There, there, big no, no, no spamming. There we go. Done. And also I'm going to shadow ban you as well. There we go. Awesome. Let's go ahead, bring the streaming software up and we'll start setting up these drills right here. Man, that was merciless, wasn't it? <laughs> Just flat ban somebody. Uh, let's go ahead and go upstairs. We'll get the other two drills. We're probably going to need some more pipes. Never mind. I just found we have a cart full of pipes. We'll go all the way up the stairs again. Let's go through here. And we will get the other two drills. Probably should have brought the cart up there, quite frankly. Put the two drills on it and then drop back down. But I don't mind the walk. I really don't mind the walk. I think by the end of the session, we'll have both of the drills set up, and I'll be very, very happy with that. That sounds pretty good, right? I think that sounds pretty good. We'll keep... Let's go ahead, grab this, and we'll drop it down here. Done. Uh, probably doesn't need to be up there, though, to be quite honest. Let's go ahead, drop that over the ledge. Uh, please? Please drop it? Please? Or not? You don't want to... Okay. Fine. Oh, my God. Drop it! Hydroneer! What is wrong with you? Oh, I'm stuck. Okay, good. Alright, let's go back up. This is actually a pretty big area. I never, like, stop and take a look around. It's pretty cool, actually. It reminds me of, uh, The Hobbit. Which I didn't like very much, uh, comparative to Lord of the Rings, or even Rings of Power. I found both of those two to be significantly better than The Hobbit. Like, it's got a nice story, and Martin Freeman did a great job in it, and it's very, very pretty, and I like the dwarf story and all that, but there's just something... There's just something about The Hobbit, the trilogy, that was so unnecessarily dragged out. Like, the Battle of the Five Armies right at the end, I was counting the minutes until it finished. I was so bored. Because there's only so much you can watch. So much PG violence that you can watch for so long. Let's go ahead and start setting up these drills. I'm already stuck. Uh, we probably should get a staircase up here, right? Might be a really good idea. Let's get, like, an easy way up. I'm just going to stick it here and against that right there. Okay, we can jump onto that pretty easily. Uh, let's go ahead and jump, and we'll go over. going to drop that right there as well. So we probably need to get a pickaxe of some sort, or we could just start pumping onto the opposite side of this conveyor belt as well, which is another option. Dog Shark is playing Paper Mario. Is he enjoying it? I bet he's enjoying it. I bet he's really enjoying it. Nintendo do make really, really games. I'm just really afraid of the repercussions of uh, kind of the history that they have on YouTube, specifically on YouTube. All right, good. They've also sent cease and desists to Twitch streamers before. Yes, he is very much so. That's awesome to hear. I love that. Okay, uh, got a bunch of pipes over here. So the only thing we really need now is our pickaxe. A handy-dandy pickaxe. Uh, we're going to mine out a little bit of a hole over here. And we're going to get these bad boys set up. This kind of looks like a... A bit of a, a weird date, right? Between two people who really, really like each other. This one's kind of leaning over the shoulder of, of, of this grinder right here. And it's kind of it's just saying something sexy in Spanish. And this one right here cannot contain their arousal. They are super excited to move this to the bedroom. Unfortunately, this is a dirty mine and there is no bedroom. So they're just gonna be caught in perpetual um, agony of, of arousal. Oh well, at least it's not my afterlife. Okay, we'll mine out a big chunk of this and then we'll start sticking a heap of the uh, machines all the way down here. I think that we'll start piping them in from this side as well, just to conserve a little bit of space. We probably want to start moving the hook centralizer. No, the centralizer. The centralizer hook a little bit further inwards too, because we don't necessarily uh, care too much about them being this far in. Or was it kind of like bugged in that position right there? I don't remember. I don't remember whatsoever. We probably just put this down right beside this other one right here so that they can endlessly have their lustful tango right there. Uh, and if we put a T junction there, I suppose the light will light up if it's functional. Let's see. Let's see. We put one... Oops. Right there. Is it lighting up? 
No, so that's where the bug starts. Right, so that's why I put the centralizer there. All right, I'll go ahead and swap these back out. Whoop, there we go. So, back to the pickaxe then, I suppose. We definitely need to mine out a uh, bit of a clearance for all of these machines that we now have. Right, so we'll get these ones out of the way. We probably need a walkway above the conveyor belts as well so that we can kind of like do a bit of maintenance or even just plug and play machines without having to go around all of the machinery we've already installed. Might be a really, really good idea. Maybe. Maybe going to be a really good idea. Okay. Go ahead, drop all that stuff there. Uh, we've got a, a, a bit of a little cubby kind of mined out for all of this. I don't think it's high enough, though. So we'll keep on going inwards. How's everyone's day going, by the way? I never really get a chance to ask until something uh, really thrilling, such as mining out a, um, a cave by hand, pops up. I've been doing okay. Yesterday was awful. Yesterday I had to deal with that utility company that I mentioned earlier. We ran out of uh, hot water here. I've got a household of six people and I manage the place that we live at. So whenever they cock something up, I uh, kind of don't really have a choice but to take a little bit of responsibility for it, even though it took them almost two weeks to uh, basically still do nothing, even though we've paid them. So uh, th that was my yesterday. Half of us showered at our gym because <laughs> we had no access to hot water. Thanks to our utility company. That's rock gas, by the way. If anybody's ever, like, using gas and rock gas as a provider that they could use, it's just not worth it. They suck so bad. They're so bad at their jobs. Uh, let's go ahead and keep mining this out. Uh, Yin Sid is also not having a great time either. She's um, very, very sick at the moment, and her, her workplace is just getting more and more stressful. And she's sick because of a stress-related condition, so um, not amazing, got to be said. What else we got? Uh, my best buddy. I repaired her a contact terminal on his car for the positive section of his car battery. And he got to the gym to have his shower, got out of the gym and tried to turn the car on. Every single light came up on the dashboard. So I'm pretty sure he hasn't taken it into a mechanic yet, but I'm fairly certain that the onboard motherboard of his um, car's electrical system has just fried itself as well because of a fiddly contact. DJ, you're good? That's great to hear. Hello, Bueno Volcano. What are you guys doing? We are kind of like mining out a little bit of a egress so that we can set up more machinery that is going to increase our production fourfold. Yes, fourfold. We've got an additional three more machines and I'm currently complaining about my weekend. <laughs> I did get to edit a video and it turned out to be one of the best videos I've ever edited. It was the uh, Demonologist one with Epic Flying Horse. That one was really fun to edit. I love that one so much. Probably the best one that's come out so far. It's not the most complex editing I've ever done, but it, man, the memes just rolled off the tongue. It was so fun to do. Good, 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 good. The first like two minutes of it is just straight comedy as well. Right, uh, I we probably need to focus on this side now because I do want to pipe in from above and we kind of do want to utilize both sections of the conveyor belt. Ideally, we probably also have a bunch of machines above the machines that we want to pipe in to uh, dump onto this one conveyor belt. But I think it would also behoove us to perhaps focus on the bottom layer first before we start um, elevating the machinery. The sound is so hypnotic. What, the the uh, the actual picking? It is a little bit hypnotic, isn't it? It's only consistent because I've got an auto clicker. Otherwise, it would be sporadic and annoying. It would also be significantly slower. Okay, this might be enough. This might be enough. This might be enough indeed. It's gonna kind of get out of all of these jagged chunks a little bit. Uh, yeah, that should be good. This should actually be really good. Let's go ahead and mine out just a little bit more in case we need it. Uh, increase the amount of light that comes in here too. Can never be a bad thing, necessarily. Awesome. So I'm pretty sure we're done with the pickaxe. Damn, we're stuck down here again. Uh, I'm actually gonna go over here. I'm going to get myself a staircase or two, and then I'm going to stick it on the conveyor belt so we can kind of move around. Let's put that on the tool rack right there and get one of these staircases. We don't want to stick it on the conveyor belt. We just want to drop it over there. And then we're going to get another one, and we're going to drop it in its place right over here so that we don't keep on getting stuck because it is very annoying. All right, I pixel hunted a little. It paid off. Good. And the cart's in the way, mm -hmm. so I can't stick this one anywhere. Let's go ahead and just move the cart out of the way. Mm -hmm. Huh? Huh? There we go. Just drop that there, and we'll stick that 
right there. So now we have a little bit of an exit. Nice. Uh, so if that's going to be the case, I'm actually going to take this gem polisher and I'm going to stick it a little bit further up the chain. Just so that we have a clear walkway to get out, even if it is a conveyor belt. Okay, so that doesn't go there. This one is going to go there. I'm going to get another one of these bad boys and I'm going to stick it here. And this one is going to go on our side, right there. And we can pipe all of these in from above, I think. We might want to raise the water up, though, and then just use a single straight pipe to go down into each of these machines, though, so we don't hit our heads. Oh, we probably don't need to do that, actually. If we make this into a T-pipe and we elbow up and around ourselves, could be pretty good. Might be a very good idea, actually. So that can't be an elbow. Uh, that now has to be a T-pipe. Let's go ahead and just change that out. We're going to need a few more T-pipes. Like this one right here can go right there. And this one right here, I think, is a T-pipe. Yep, T-pipe. Uh, that can go right there. That one is just going to be an elbow. No, it's going to be a T-pipe. Because we want to pipe in further up the chain. That can go right there. Going to go ahead and... Stick a straight pipe here. I'm wondering. I'm wondering, maybe we get a T-pipe that just goes upwards from there as well. So we can pipe into the other side of the machinery. Like that. And then we want an elbow. Kind of curve up and around, like so. We want the straight pipe we already took out to go above us. Just so we don't hit our heads every time we're walking along this conveyor belt, I think. Now we want it to come down, right there. And we want this to come up and around into there. So all of these should be powered more or less now. We just need to shovel some dirt into its bummy bum. And we should be good. Where is it? There we go. Could we shovel right here? Can't go around that. Gotta go over. Let's go ahead and start shoveling. Uh, put that one there. Good. Put this one there. And put this one there. I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and hit these levers. No, let's not. We actually probably should get the conveyor belt set up down there before we do anything too stupid. Let's go ahead and stick this back because we're done with it. We need two straight conveyors. We definitely have one right here, and we're going to need two straight pipes coming out of it as well to filter into. There we go. Put that there. Going to grab a straight pipe. We're actually going to get two straight pipes, I think. Put that right there. And let's go ahead and drop that right there as well. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and put that conveyor there. That should be functioning. I know there's like water dropping all out of this place, but it's still going to be absolutely fine. The second conveyor belt, I don't know if we have one. I don't think we do, but we only need the one. So I'm just going to make a run up to the shop and we're going to get a conveyor belt. Perfect. We're doing really well, actually. Uh, usually Ice Helm's uh, space constraints are just really annoying. But since we now actually do have access to these tier 3 machines, we're just going to get an absolute enormous amount of resources. Good, 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 good. Let's come down here. Uh, actually, just over here. We need one single straight conveyor. Perfect. And we'll put this down here. We'll buy it for 220 buckery booze. That's perfectly fine. And now we're off. Nice. Okay, so we want to take a, a big... A leap of faith over here and we made it somehow i don't know how i'm actually getting muscle memory to be able to figure out exactly where to jump on those i suppose it's just experience at this point let's go ahead and drop that there and now we can turn all of these machines on boop, boop, boop. so all of these are now going to be filtering into the grinder which is going to take no damage grind 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 good 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 Yep, it's instantaneous as well. And since we've got the uh, water hook filters up here taking all of the damage, this grinder isn't going to bust down anytime soon. This is literally a workhorse. Wow. Fuels at once, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to pick up some of these gems because they're just lying on the floor and I don't want them to be lying on the floor. That's not amazing. There we go. What else have we got? I don't think we've got anything else just kind of lying around the place. I think we've got a pretty clean workspace. Pretty well optimized as well. Okay, so... What else have we got? We haven't had a single bit of Clausium or a single bit of core stone filter through, which is a little bit of a shame. It's all been gold and iron, I think, so far. Oh, no. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the dirt over there. I was expecting something else. Is it actually going to be 
spewing out core stone and the other stuff we want. Is that a thing? Let's see. Let's just wait here for a bit and see uh, all of the drops that we get. Because we might get some really, really good drops. We might get some really, really crap drops, I think. All right. Iron, gold, iron. Oh, we got an emerald out of that one. That was pretty good. Now, I'm going to be just right back in uh, two shakes of a tick. It's freezing in here. I'm going to turn on a heater. I got goosebumps. And it's not because this game is so good. I will literally be right back. Oh. Did anybody see any core stone? I'm seeing gems coming out. I'm not seeing anything else, though, unfortunately. Actually surprised this is still going. This thing right here. Alright. Let's check. Let's check. Uh, no. We got a little bit of Clautium, but we didn't get much more. Didn't get much more whatsoever. In fact, we're actually getting... Oh, is that... Is that what I think it is? Nope, that's a shard. Let's see where this filter's into. Damn it. Where's it going? I think it might be Clautium. Yeah, we got some more Clautium. We doubled our Clautium. Okay, so this is functioning a little bit. I got it. Let's go. The image. Oh, the thing that you were trying to send me earlier. Okay. I'll take a look at it now while we kind of like watch the chain of production kind of go on a little bit. Soldier Blue. Love this song so much. Oh, I didn't realize that I was screen recording as well. All right, let's see this thing. GeForce Experience. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. Why is that a video, though? Why is that a video? Uh, if you're doing this on desktop, by the way, there's actually a print screen button on uh, the set of keys right above your uh, arrow keys. That might be a good one to use instead. All right, good. It's because the screenshot would not work. Oh, man, that sucks. I know. What about Control-Shift-S? Have you tried that before? That, uh, that's a pretty important one. I use that one very frequently, especially if uh, I see like a... An image that I need to use for something and it's a weird format that my uh, editing software will not take, like JFIF or WebP or something like that. Control Shift S is, is no, not Control Shift S. Windows Shift S. Try Windows Shift S. It's a godsend. It's literally a godsend. Well, all of this is working. I'm actually surprised this is still open. Why is this still open? Have we just not had any gems fall on these? Maybe. Why is this one closed? Okay, that turns them all off, which is pretty cool. Right, so now we are kind of like on the hunt for more machinery, aren't we? In fact, let's do a couple of quests. Well, let's get ourselves a core stone intake pipe for the machinery so that it just absolutely spams resources at an alarming rate. We probably don't need to increase the pressure for this, although it is kind of linked up to the mining machine, so... I don't know what that'll do. It's not like it's going to take any reduced damage, and all the grinder does is process the 
materials into what they ordinarily would have been if you'd brush panned them in the first place. So I'm pretty happy with just having one of these so far. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do exactly what I just said. Let's, uh, I've already forgotten as well. I've already forgotten what I just said. What was it? Four stone and take pipe. Okay, so we're going to go and get a anvil. We're going to get a blacksmithing hammer. We're going to get a few things that we need to kind of like to get ourselves a workshop. And I think we'll move that over onto this side of the of the mine, right? We'll, we'll just keep the workshop on this side of the mine. So we're going to need a bunch of those gigantic two by two platforms. You're going to need heaps of those. So let's go to the uh, furniture store. We'll get lots and lots of floors. We'll get uh, a bunch of blacksmithing stuff. We'll get some crucibles. No, forges, because we want to heat up the ingots. We don't really care too much about the rest of the, the stuff. We'll get an anvil, we'll get a blacksmithing hammer. We'll get everything that we actually need to kind of do what we need to do. All right, still coming up here. And we're off. Excellent. I still love the view of this place. A little bit of a shame that the ceiling is just dirt, though. I feel like I'm in the Hall of the Mountain King by Edvard Krieg. I think that's how you say his name. I don't know. I've never actually heard anybody say it. I live in a... I live in a country of Philistines. In fact, I only learned... Uh, what was it? Um, a few months ago. How to say anathema. The, the Latin phrase for curse. Or accursed. I thought it was like anathema. What the hell? I always thought it was anathema. And that's because uh, no one ever told me how to say it. Why did I just get kicked off the elevator? Game? Oh, I see. It's the cart. Okay, that's fine. I care not. All right, let's uh, lug this into the back of Lofty. We'll go to the store. We'll get a lot of floors. And I think we'll get a... We can probably actually get a few walls as well. Get a nice kind of like black smithing studio. Wait, what are we doing? What's this? Oh, stone walls. Oh, pillars. Why don't they do floors? Oh, they do. Ah, okay. Let's get a bunch of these. Let's get a really nice looking workshop floor, I think. Uh, we're probably still going to go and get ourselves a couple of the uh, big chunky platforms, though. And the reason I want those is because it would be nice kind of like divvy up the work area. All right, one. How many of these do we want? Like a... A billion? Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. 20! Oh, would you look at that? There's actually a construction hammer right here, which is pretty cool as well. So we could get the stone pillar foundation, then stick a few of them around the place. We'll also get a couple of walls, maybe? But they kind of look a little bit jagged, don't they? Stone wall peak, hmm. Stone wall window, hmm. Stone doorway, unnecessary. Wooden stairs, oh my god, we were going to the uh, store for these, weren't we? Going all the way to the store. Okay, so let's see how much this costs. Because the furniture place down south at the town is pretty cheap. 600 bucks. My God, seriously? That's nothing. All right, let's go into the shop here at Ice Helm. We'll take these... Yeah, we'll take the saw. We'll go to the shop in Ice Helm. We'll cut the money in half, and then we'll take half of it up there, and we'll just leave it in the bucket up there. Guess we ever need, like, stone floors or walls or something again. But good. Which also gives us the opportunity of getting rid of the saw that we keep tripping on right here. All right, great. So the shop is just around this corner here. I'm still going to jump that. Just to save a, a fraction of a second as well. Oh, I've been really interested in doing like a playthrough for Oblivion recently. I, I don't know if anybody wants to watch me play Oblivion, but it's really good. God, I'd be so keen to like 100% Oblivion. That'd be such a fun thing to do. That'd be a super fun challenge, actually. 100% Oblivion. Because, unfortunately, uh, when I played Oblivion on console, I probably sank a good, I don't know, 50 hours into it when I was a teenager, and then I got meningitis. And while I was dying on the couch of the meningitis, uh, my parents and, and I had a friend over as well, they didn't quite realize that I was dying of meningitis. Uh, so they just kind of thought I was sick and had to sleep it off. 
the friend I had over at the time, he was there for two weeks. I only really remember him being there for a couple of days. But when I came to in the hospital, the worst news was not, hey, uh, you, you should be dead. You should actually be dead. Medically, um, you should be dead. You were past the point of no return and you uh, should not have survived as you did. No, that was not the worst news. The worst news is that my friend had beaten Oblivion for me and I don't remember any of it. Oh my god. Pikuniku? Pikuniku? You should do that. It's cute. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the uh, the Oblivion? I didn't think um I didn't think Oblivion was terribly it was a terribly cute game. The first thing I hear when I join. Oh dying on the couch. Yeah. No, that was my childhood. What's up? Uh you like dying? Gotta be said, I've I've had a taste of death. Uh I've I've seen the other side and I'm not terribly attracted to it. Like, yeah, it's not necessarily the kind of thing where you know, there's hellfire and brimstone and your life flashes before your eyes or anything like that. It's just nothingness. There's no chemicals. There's no nightmares. There's no dreams. It's just everything that you come to either love or hate about living just isn't there anymore. And I had enough of that for two flat weeks to last me a lifetime. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm all about living. I'm all about it. Uh, we're setting up a workshop, by the way. We're setting up a workshop just on this side of the world. What? Yeah, no, um, I had meningitis and the... Uh, virus had essentially reached my brain, where, uh, which is kind of what most people would consider the point of no return, unfortunately. So that was uh, my teenage years, and I lost every, th every single friend that I had because of it. I uh, went back to school, and uh, nobody missed me either because I was a weird kid. Uh, it was kind of weird. And then I met all of the friends that I'm now actually still living with at 30 years old. Pretty crazy, huh? Pretty crazy how the world works out. You died? How? It was just meningitis. I didn't die. Necessarily. My heart didn't stop, but uh, there was bacteria in my spine, ba bacterial meningitis, that um, should have killed me because it was encroaching on my brain when I arrived to the hospital and it had um, it almost very, very close reached my brain. And by that point, you've basically got a few more hours to live. Luckily, uh, I was put on treatment for both types of meningitis because they couldn't quite tell what it was whether it was viral, viral or bacterial and one of them staved off the meningitis enough for a specialist to fly down from Auckland uh, to kind of come and save my life which is pretty crazy actually I'd like to tell you more but I don't have any medical notes on it no one took notes which is really annoying to kind of chase up because uh, now I'm permanently crippled by having to deal with um, chronic fatigue syndrome which has recently been recorrected to neurogenic fatigue uh, based on a uh, leaky, leaky adrenaline valve in my brain. So uh, that uh, that's fun. I probably wouldn't recommend it to anybody else. It's 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 not a great one. If you want to get out of school, there are way easier ways of getting out of school than contracting meningitis. Also, I contracted meningitis day two of my school holidays back when I was 14 years old. So I had two weeks and I spent them all in hospital. Although, annoyingly, when uh, school started back up, we're also going to need more floors, so I'm going to go back up to the shop. Uh, annoyingly, when I went back to high school, everybody just said I was lying about it to get out of school for a bit, so but that was fun as well. Uh, got back to school, and uh, everything just sucked. Just sucked, and I met a bunch of people. Met a bunch of people. Uh, namely, one guy named Carl, and then uh, all of the friends just started coming to me after that. Carl is, has been my best friend since I was about 15 years old, and I live with him now. I live with him now. Good guy. First guy to really uh, give me a chance as well. So this isn't where we want to be. We want to be in the top side store, don't we? I know that the frame rate's getting a bit choppy. We're probably going to have to turn off the MILF sack with her really quickly. But yeah, no, uh, long story short, I, I contracted a life-threatening illness and I'm uh, now a YouTuber because it's really, really difficult for me to kind of like work a normal job for any longer than an hour every few days because... Any longer than that, if I expend too much energy, then my body just collapses. It's, it's literally counterproductive for me to be working the jobs that I used to be working, which was like in the trades. I used to be a builder for five years until my health got the better of me. Before that, gardening and PTing. Very uh, physically demanding jobs. I'm hoping to study electrical engineering next year. That'd be really fun. I, that was my favorite part of the trades, is just playing with electrical wiring and stuff like that. Loved it so much. So hopefully I might, um, I don't know, like I might go back into the trades. I probably won't be able to handle the heavy lifting and stuff like that though. So I'll probably have to find an alternative with the electrical engineering. Maybe get a, an office job somewhere where I just read graphs and make sure all of the numbers 
uh, the numbers that they're supposed to be. But ideally, I think, I'd just like create a bunch of things in my spare time and then patent them and just kind of sell them to a bunch of big, big vendors. That's kind of like my solid plan. Like I will get a job if I have to, but I'm, I'm a very creative mind. So inventing things, I'm very happy to do that as well. Mostly happy to do invent things. I've already got a, go, a couple of really good inventions. I've got a um a shotgun that fires party poppers. I know that's going to sell well. Excellent. Get all these floors right here. I love how the chat is quiet so Yinsen can talk. Spray paints. Whoa! A shotgun that fires party poppers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Double barrel shotgun. Sworn off. And it fires party poppers. Very cool. That is epic. Yeah, I know. I've also figured out like a little jury rigged system with springs where if you crack the, the gun open, it actually like fires the party popper shells out after you've discharged them. So yeah, that's going to be really, really fun to uh, produce. And hopefully I'll get a platform on YouTube so I can actually start advertising it to people. Very cool. Other than that, the inventions, the, the inventions are kind of like very, very boring quality of life things. Like uh, I've got uh, one that I was kind of like planning out recently which is just a little hook that you stick on curtains that already exist so that you can press a button and the curtains close themselves which is not necessarily thrilling but i've seen the options for like retirees and their quality of life devices this device that i just explained costs thousands of dollars to explore a, a device that opens and closes curtains for you it's hard to do it's heavy when you're old and i can make one of these devices for about 50 bucks you know, one size fits all kind of device, 50 bucks, just production costs. So I'd probably sell it for a 100% markup, 100 bucks. And then you save thousands of dollars on that same curtain system because you probably already own curtains and you don't need to buy the other people's uh, Persian rugs of curtains for a machine to be able to close them. Doesn't make any sense. But yeah, a lot of boring little things like that. I'll hopefully just own patents and then make passive income on based on the sales of those. It'd be really cool, actually. I'd love to make a living on that. You invent things sometimes? Cool. Yeah, I do. I, I love it. It's, it's so much fun. So much fun to just invent things. I still kind of like... I'll do it on computers pretty frequently. I'll, I'll invent things on computers, like um, macros. A lot of people have macros that just do one or two things on a computer, like, uh, you know, dump, in, dump inventory into a Minecraft chest. People do that. I create macros that are thousands of lines of code long so that you can um, just basically automate something that would necessarily earn you in-game currency. Like, I, I learned it on RuneScape initially. I created a bot that essentially mined up jewels and ingots um, and then recognized exactly what level you are at so it would always go to the best possible one. It would look for ore nodes that nobody was already using. It would mine them. When the inventory falls up, it would go deposit them into a bank. And then when the bank's uh, deposit got to four digits in storage, you would withdraw... Um, the required kind of like uh because uh, uh, there are some ingots that require two of one thing and one of another you would want a balance of those to, to maximize your injury you take that over to a, a smeltery smelt it and then you make that into an armor set which you then list on the grand exchange because you're looking at the grand exchange i, I put a lure hook in there to on, analyze the grand exchange online so that you can see the best prices for uh, certain armor sets and I would always undercut those best prices by 10 gold. So my ones would always sell. That's uh, RuneScape, have not heard that in months. Uh, it's been a wee while since I've done it. Even if it's something boring, it is something almost nobody has done. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it's crazy. Initially, what I wanted to do when I left high school was uh, go up north to a place called Nelson, which is kind of New Zealand's hub of retirees. And I wanted to open up a... Um, a small company that just installs embedded systems for retired people because there's huge money in it and they love it. They absolutely love people who can kind of like make their lives easier. So I'd just like go up there, I'd install Google Assistants and uh, coffee machines that turn themselves on, ovens on um, a timer that you can operate with your phone or voice through Google and stuff like that. So that, you know, old people can kind of spend more time shambling around the house as they usually will spend anyway but they'll they'll be shambling towards something they enjoy doing that was my that was my original plan for when i left high school but i i met yintset and i plan to stay in dunedin for her a more of a romantic than a um a worker anyway so it doesn't faze me too much we almost uh this looks really cool 
I really like this factory floor we've got going on here. Uh, probably want to expand out one more into kind of this territory right here as well. And then we'll have a bunch of stairs leading up to what we've got here. Could have put that one right there, I think. Yeah, I'm a bit of an inventor. Um, uh, there's lots and lots of things for Airsoft as well that uh, I've kind of already designed. But I would need a 3D printer to get a lot of the parts made up. Or I would need to contact a, a factory in China or something like that. Just to get them made uh, cheap, because they don't have to be necessarily very sturdy. They just have to kind of, like, function. Like that gun that I, I was talking about, Fires Party Poppers. I managed to uh, figure out a way of getting an underslung grenade launcher on an assault rifle that just fires Party Poppers for the purpose of airsoft. Not for the purpose of guns. That would be highly irresponsible. And I would want them made out of cheap parts, because if you fire a gun with one of these things on the underbarrel, I would want it to break the Party Popper. So nobody actually has the the ability of showing somebody, hey, look at this party popper on the underbarrel of my actual firearm, and then points an actual firearm at a person. I, I would never want that whatsoever. I'd want it made out of cheap parts. Uh, it just sort of recoil breaks it. But uh, the whole purpose of the uh, underslung grenade launcher, I called it the happy birthday gun. It had uh, two little things, and it would use the back blast from the party popper to fire two BBs at the party popper, um, kind of like the direction that it goes in. So uh, you'd fire two BBs into somebody at Airsoft, which would be a kill. And you could also just shout happy birthday as the uh, confetti and stuff goes off. I'm kind of working on another one at the moment that instead of um, kind of like firing two BBs, it just fires one BB and then also blows on a party horn. So <laughs> confetti and a party horn just fires out the front of the gun. But I've, I feel like it's getting a little bit too convoluted and the parts get a little bit more expensive. Oh, we didn't get uh, that side of the floor either. But yeah, uh, inventing things, fixing things, I am so excited by all of that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of people find, like, marketing and stuff like that boring. I absolutely adore it. And marketing is one of my, um, my greatest loves in life. How to sell snow to a snowman. Okay, now that we've got uh, this factory floor laid down, we want to start... How many more of these do we have? We've really got too many of these big factory floors, gotta be said. You know... Let's go ahead and place these anyway, and we'll we'll store all the nukes on top of them as well. If we can reach them. Yeah, we can reach them. Of course we can. Oh my god, we got way too many of these. I want to put some stairs leading down into the mine and leading up from here as well. So it looks nice and bougie. Alright, uh, probably one in the corner over here too. So it looks like it's supposed to be here. It looks on purpose. Nice. And that's pretty much everything from that direction. Let's also kind of like plug in this hole so nothing falls down the back there. Hey, Jensen. Hello there. How how are you doing? Don't worry. I'm still here. I'm still reading chat. You just accidentally uh, triggered one of my uh, favorite things to talk about, which is like coming up with really, really fun little ideas for products. I'm a capitalist, baby. I've had a bunch of people, including my brother, tell me I look like Chris. I asked my cousin last night on call if I look like Chris. Probably better to look like Chris than Frisk, right? Because uh, Frisk definitely looks like she has some kind of, you know, nutrient deficiency. What do these look like from underneath? Don't actually look that crap, you know. I don't like them. Nice. I asked my cousin last night on call if I look like Chris. I showed an image of them in the message. She said I look... I did. You might find that uh, Chris may have an everyman's face. Like, it's, it's, it's intentionally very blank to kind of really draw in the player and make them feel connected to a character that's only a few pixels big. It's a bit of an art form, but it, it, when you do it well, it, it works very, very well. I guess it is better to look like Chris than Frisk. Yeah, definitely. Oh my god, could you imagine looking like Chris? Uh, Frisk? Sorry? If you looked like Frisk, you would literally be neon yellow. You would look like a Simpson. You can sort of put yourself in their shoes. They've got nothing going on with them. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a strat- it's marketing. Actually, it's a marketing strategy so that you get everybody of every demographic to relate to your character. Otherwise, you have to create multiple characters to play as, which Ubisoft have done a, a fairly good job of doing recently, um, but their games suck now, so... Unfortunately, the, uh, there, there was a trade-off for that instance. You, you now want to play as the characters, uh, but you don't want to play the games themselves. I'm talking about Chris design? Yeah, definitely. I think Frisk is pretty basic. Chris is... Chris is also very basic. 
Very pixelated. Try and like take your face and then blur it into like a 10 by 10 pixel arrangement. See if you look really, really similar. I bet you would. I bet I'd look really similar as well. Okay, we'll drop that down there. And what are we here for? Stairs. We're going upstairs for some stairs. Just burped into the microphone. That's um probably not the best thing I should be doing. But I did it anyway. Sue me. Hi there, Spongy. What about my number one customer? Hello there, Spamton. How are we? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing good. I had an absolutely terrible weekend. <laughs> but I edited one of the funniest videos that I'd ever come up with, so. You know, good and bad. It was a it was a weekend of halves. Hold the lift, please. Good. So yeah, it was good. It was bad. Just had to make my daily cameo on the stream. Hot Hachi Mama, do you have a 99% off deals for me? Yeah, go on. Give them some 90 99% deals. Whatever they would entail. Uh, stairs are over here. I'm actually going to get these double stairs. You know, because we're actually covering a, a pretty wide area. So why not recess it into the wall? They're a little bit different looking than the other ones. Oop, that one just did a uh, an unideal bottle flip. Ah, perfect. Okay, I found the angle. That was right there. And then just slapped straight down. Good, like a Charlie Chaplin bit. I'm getting a bunch of these as well. Excellent. I kind of like how a lot of the building stuff works up here. I don't like the walls. I think the walls look like absolute garbage, though, unfortunately. All right, that should be enough. Let's go ahead and buy these bad boys. Boop, drop that there. And we'll go ahead and boop this button. And now we're going to go ahead and build the workshop. They don't have any workshop things here, do they? No, I don't think so. Okay, so we are probably going to have to go out to the city for all the workshop stuff, like the forge and, and stuff like that. I love the voice you make from me, Lamau. At this point, I'm part of the streams. Ha ha. It is a good voice, isn't it? It's kind of like, um, if Matt Berry was a eunuch. <laughs> I think that's the voice. All right, missed the jump. That's a shame. Ah, well, there's always a second try, right? You, you never, there's never a time where you can't just walk back through molten magma just to build your workshop. Oh, that looks like ass, actually. I don't know why I put that one way up there. Okay. Let's go ahead and drop these staircases into the corners, like so. Good. One right there. And we'll put this one here. Very good. Nice. And we'll put this one there. Yes, that's nice as well. I also want one right here, too. I quite, I quite like the idea of that. And let's actually, we'll take some of these floors. We'll just kind of, or we won't expand out the, the floor. Seriously, I can't put any of them here. Oh, what a damp fart. Okay, let's just drop that there. Uh, we'll keep on doing the stairs then, I suppose. Even though it looks worse. And it's it makes no sense to put stairs over here. We don't want things to, like, fall down there. That's that's kind of why I'm plugging the holes in the first place. All right, put that there. Mm, this one can go all the way over here. Nice. All right, very good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these nukes and stuff. We probably want to arrange them a little bit better than we have been, right? Uh, let's go ahead and flip these upside down, like so. Uh, we'll put that one there. I think we'll just place them, honestly. Uh, one there. We've got a factory line going. Uh, let's move all this stuff out of the way. This is really annoying. All these, all these levers are super obnoxious. All right, good. Well, I gotta go. Just wanted to say hi. See you and remember, I'm always watching. Thank you, Spamton. Thank you for reminding everybody. Thank you very much for your creepy cameo. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I hope you see Mike, I guess. Uh, let's actually flip these around so we know they're nukes. There we go. Good. A little bit of a radiation symbol on them right there. Good, 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 good. Yes, one goes there. One goes there. We'll recess them into the walls. Perfect. Uh, I thought we had more nukes. Apparently not. I'm going to put this cork uh -huh. inside of that gem compressor. <laughs> I didn't actually think it would go in there. That's funny. Uh, I'm also going to take these levers. Let's kind of like line them up here i suppose we're not going to plug them into the no oh whoops damn we're not going to plug them into the nukes that would be a silly we don't want to do a silly we don't want to blow ourselves up accidentally especially not after putting this nice floor down okay where's the building hammer let's put let's solidify all of the floor that we've just built uh anything to bonk yes bonk 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 Bonk, bonk, bonk. Okay, now the stairs. Bonk, 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 
bonk, bonk, bonk, bonk, bonk. Excellent. And now we're going to steer the other side of this place. Because this is going to lead into a mine. So we, we, we probably want to steer into this, right? Yep, one right there. Good. Uh, we aren't going to be blocking off any kind of access, by the way. This is absolutely fine. We don't have enough steers. That's annoying. What do we need? Like four more? I can get four more. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the steers exactly where they belong. Bonk. Bonk. And bonk. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's put this back on the rack. Awesome. Cool. 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 Tight. 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 Cool. 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 How are we going here? Okay. We're just dumping a bunch of this crap. We probably have low pressure. We, uh, okay, let's, we it's one thing to build this up, right? It's one thing to get a nice factory floor. It's another thing entirely to have really, really good pressure. And we're probably wasting time by not having it. So let's go back to the MILF's aquifer. We'll do a quest. We'll try and get, I think it's 300 prospecting tokens so that we can get the uh, core stone intake pipe. Cause that's gonna make the machines way faster. POV when you do a type on a stream and the streamer goes on a rant about taxes when you just wanted to say facts. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, you don't want to fax me, my dude. I will I will talk about taxes until the un, until the end of days. Until the rapture happens, I will literally talk about taxes. I also just lied. I'm already bored about talking about taxes. I haven't even got into the meat of what taxes are. And you know, I'm I'm, I'm bored hearing about them coming out of my own mouth. I can't imagine what struggles. What monstrous kind of issues that you guys are experiencing right now just hearing about me talking about taxes hearing me talk about talking about taxes for god's sake not even talking about taxes i'm literally talking about talking about ta talking about taxes and i know there was a stutter in there but it, it wasn't intentional at that time I, I can usually get away with stuttering just to extend out time a little bit well i think of the next sentence it's devious but it works and no one ever teases me for it. I love this modern world. Okay, good. We probably need about four. I'm going to get five in case we need a spear. Good. Uh, I'm going to buy these. We are going to purchase them. Yes, 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 yes. Boop. And now we are going into town. We are going to go and get these smithing things. Or we could just go to, straight to Milf's Aquifer. Let's go to the town first, actually. Let's see how expensive it's going to be in terms of materials to get the things we need. I'm pretty sure somebody's just going to offer us a quest with lots and lots of prospecting tokens as a reward. And we've definitely got the materials available at the MILF's Aquifer, so we're definitely going to go back there and we're going to see what we can do. Yinsen, that's great music taste from what I've heard on here. Oh, only on here, my dude. You gotta go onto the Discord. Check out the channel, You Bop You Lose. I, I put an album in there once a week. I think we're up to the, our fourth week. And in the Bop You Lose for this week, it is currently the album that you are listening to. It is Sonic Temple by The Cult. The only band I've ever seen who was unironically driven literally insane by the messages that their songs uh, preach. Okay, now that we're here, we want to... Go to the prospecting guild. That's right. Uh, we're just going to run there. We'll leave We'll leave Lofty down where he's parked. And we'll go up here. We'll, we'll check out how expensive it is to get ourselves a core stone intake pipe. Yeah, music's a real important part of my life. I've got this really good attitude to music. Well, this is quite based, actually. I don't know if a lot of people um, also believe in this. Because I've found that most people don't agree with me on this. But I will listen to any music genre... Any artist in any music genre, so long as they are good at that genre. Taylor Swift, really good at soft pop. I'll listen to Taylor Swift. Um, Whitechapel, really, really good at death metal. I'll listen to Whitechapel frequently. The Cult, they did a, a weird racial appropriation thing and they got cancelled because they did uh, basically blackface for Indians once. But their music, genius in the 80s rock scene. Do you listen to Daria Core? I have never heard of that in my life. DJ Taylor Swift is horrible. Oh, is that why she's a billionaire? <laughs> You'll go insane if you try and understand what is good or bad in that genre. I don't know. Like, I've been uh, pretty in deep in a lot of music genres for a lot of my life. When I was... I mentioned I caught meningitis earlier um, today. 
Uh, well, not I don't have the meningitis today. But when I was 14, I caught meningitis and I had my birthday in the hospital when I was 15. Basically, my life just fell apart. That was the point at which I, I picked up a guitar and I just started... I, I started to articulate my feelings, not verbally to everybody, because nobody knew what I was going through at that point. Nobody knew the stresses on my body that I had to deal with. Nobody knew uh, that I had to ride a school bus for three hours every single day just to get to school late. I slept a lot at school as well. I picked up a guitar. I learned to articulate myself through that guitar. And then, uh, because we didn't have amazing access to the Wi-Fi, I started learning by ear, album after album after album. Started with Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. Uh, moved on to Meteora by Linkin Park. Uh, Skid Row's 18 and Life. I learned that one. What's it called? Well, maybe it was self-titled. I can't remember. But yeah, I started phonetically learning songs on guitar. And I got really, really good at it. So then I became really, really good at kind of like appreciating genres just by ear. It was really, really cool. Dari Core is insane. Hyperbop combined with breakcore and other stuff. Too many genres, man. There's so many genres. Like, just say metal. <laughs> like, technically what I listen to is post-hardcore beatdown deathcore, which is just revolting to say, and it makes you sound like such a wanker when you say it to other people. Because other people will be all like, oh, yeah, I quite like Shawn Mendes. Or, uh, hey, do you know Ed Sheeran? And, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, Chelsea Grin and the, the Ashes to Ashes EP is just so goddamn fat. The, the tone on there, the guitars, is god tier. And uh, one of Alex Quayler's final albums where he, scre he mastered his craft of screaming. You know, that kind of stuff before he, um, the, the, the drug stuff kind of uh, got to him in the, in the album Self-Inflicted. But like, you could say so much about metal music, so much trivia, and it, it just doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Daria Koi has Daria in the name because the owner of the genre, a.k.a. Leroy, has themes and pictures from the show Daria on his albums. I messed up my wording in a bit. My gosh. I hate it when your brain feels like it's waking up for the whole day. Yeah. I get that uh, at the gym. I call it gym brain. When you go for a run and then someone asks you, like, uh, a question that involves math or, like, something that you would have to think about. We need 700 bucks. We need 600 bucks. No, we need 500 bucks. And then we can get one of these intake pipes. If we get 1200 bucks, we can get two. And then everything's way faster. So we'll go ahead and we'll try and find someone who's given away like a 1400 buck uh, prospecting guild. What's my dingle? But yeah, music is just, it's so vast and big. Like, every metalhead these days has heard of Polyphia, right? Polyphia aren't a metal band. They don't play metal. A lot of people attribute them to, like, Gent. But technically... They don't play gent. They play funk. They play soul. They play blues. They play flamenco, for God's sake. They play everything that's not metal. This, and I'll give you my tokens. 89 prospecting guild tokens? Piss off, dickhead. Way too poor. What about this guy? I'm focusing on nothing and I'm getting used to it. And it sucks. Yeah. It happens. Uh, this lady wants some soup. I'm not, I'm not giving it to her. I'm not giving her a single drop of, of my soup. That's mine. Uh, she can rot in hell for all I care. Where the hell is everybody? There should be more people with quests around the place, right? Are they on the river? Are they stuck in the river this time? No. Okay. Well, why don't we go back to Ember's Cradle? Maybe we'll find somebody who does actually have a quest for... Sir? What's up to? All right. You do you. Creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Creepy indeed. But yeah, I, I, music's a huge part of my life, so I got a pretty good taste in music. You would be genuinely surprised at the music that you would actually enjoy. For example, if you quite like um, uh, Architects, or maybe, who's softer than Architects? Escape the Fate, um, Of Mice and Men, those kind of guys. If you, if you like those guys, you'd probably like Ash Nico. Quite frankly, Ash Nico is probably good, actually going to be in the You Bop You Lose for next week. All right, uh, we need quests. Where are all the quest givers at? We probably want to go back to Ember's Cradle, right? Because that had the highest kind of density of quest givers. I don't really see any on the road right now. Let's go back and try our luck at Ember's Cradle. I'm not fancying my chances here. I don't even know if this is the right way anymore. We haven't been back there in so long. Bro, am I weird for liking lowercase genre? Yes. You are weird for liking lowercase genre. 
I'll tell you the definition so you get what it is. Oh, man, I... <laughs> I, when I was a kid, there were so many genres. Well, teenager, uh, technically. There were so many genres, and every single band had to have a unique genre. It's it's kind of obnoxious. Did we did turn this off, didn't we? Yes, we did. Good. So the gems are no longer piling up. Perfect. We've made a real mess here, actually. We could probably actually just take the workshop from here and then set it back up at the um, at the place we were just going at. Let's do that. Let's do that right now. We'll put these in the back of the car. We won't buy anything. We'll go get a... We'll go and get another quest somewhere else. Okay, I'm taking this furnace. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the back here. This is a small furnace, by the way. There is no bigger furnace in the game, so I don't understand why that's a thing. Ah, uh, blacksmithing hammer. That's going to be essential as well. Let's go ahead and drop this in the back. In fact, no, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and drop it in the cart. Because we're not taking the truck down south. We're taking the cart down south. What else we got? The furnace and the anvil can go downstairs as well. Good, we'll put those there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's anything else that we need. I think that's pretty much everything. We don't need that sharpening stone. We probably will need this casting mold at some... Nah, we're not, we're not dealing with ores anymore, actually. So we're not going to need that whatsoever. Yep, that's it. Uh, we're probably going to need the saw, though. We are probably going to need the saw to cut the ingots in half. Otherwise, we'll just be wasting our our resources on the quests by over uh, kind of dedicating resources to them. Whew. Lowercase is an extreme form of ambient minimalism, which very quiet sounds are amplified to extreme levels. Minimal artist Steve Roden popularized the movement with an album entitled Forms of Pat. Uh, I also like electric metal. What, like uh, electric cowboy? That's pretty good. Or we butter the bread with butter. God, they are heavy as hell. They, um, We Butter the Bread with Butter covered one of the Electric Cool Boy songs, Hyper Hyper. It was pretty good, actually. Very fat. And it has a uh, break in the middle where um, the drop is played by an oboe. In which he made recordings of himself handling paper in various ways. Ugh. Ugh. It's basically just eerie alien music. Lowercase just scratches my brain in a nice spot. It's weird but cool. That's just ASMR. It's literally, you're explaining ASMR to me. I mean, if, if you would consider that music, sure, art is subjective to the viewer in every single instance, but I personally wouldn't go out of my way to listen to uh, paper rustling. Especially not for an hour on an album. <laughs> That'd be a big no-no for me. Okay, good. I don't get the tingles that everybody talks about either. Uh, we're at the fishing village looking for literally anybody to give us a quest. You Sir! Seen the catch yesterday. I'll piss off. A lobster the size anybody in here? Hello? Anybody got a quest? Either. Man, everyone's broke as hell. Why are there repair units here? We're not anywhere near a... Why, why is this person kind of hiding in the alleyway? We're not near any machinery. Why are there spanners around here? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. That's weird. I don't think it's the best song. I don't like the OG creators of the genre, but some music is nice to me. Just kind of noise. That's the thing, though, right? There's always this phrase in marketing. You may have heard it if you've seen the movie Margin Call. Uh, there are three methods of kind of like doing something. Be first, be smarter, or cheat. That's the one from Margin Call. I, I like to think of cheat as innovate. But, you know, a lot of people do actually kind of like just flat out cheat. Maybe we take our chances up here at the fortress with the king. Hey, old blood. Hey. So, there are a couple of people I see up here who do have quests. But that's the thing. If you're the first one doing something, generally you're not going to be the best at it. You reckon you could get this for me? Why do you sound like a woman? Also, 12 bucks? No. You know, Keep your money, peasant. Starve. Eat your money. All right. Hello there, lady. Market by Summit Different. That's nice. Just it's buying um iron ingots at a way worse price than everywhere else. Good to know. Hey there. Hello. Hi, purple man. Don't mind me. I'm just mooching about. That's nice. Have you seen anybody with a quest around here? I've only seen like four since I left uh, the other side of the map. Give me this, and I'll give you my. All right, let's do this guy's one, right? I think we should just do this guy's one. What's he gonna? He's gonna give us eighteen thousand prospect guild tokens. Jesus! We'll probably make our entire um, infrastructure out of prospect guild tokens if that's the case. We'll do that. We'll do that. Have you heard the lowercase song, Steve Roden, Aria, Hanging Garden, Second Vision? It's a super creepy track. 
Uh, no. No, I have not. I, I listen to this, um, this, this thing that uh, the kids quite like uh, called music. Where there's like, um, it's kind of hard to explain actually. There's like a, a bunch of people that are, are quite good at instruments and they get together and then they play something in sync with each other. Uh, whereas um, I, I don't necessarily listen to people screwing up balls of paper uh, into a microphone for for an extended period of time. I, I prefer there to be a, a better beat than crinkly paper. <laughs> Bro roasted me. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like, um, anyone can listen to whatever they want, and they can be as based as they want about it as well. But it's much like religion, right? A lot of people believe in the music that they listen to because it gives them meaning. Who am I to take that from somebody? Who am I to take that from somebody? Even if somebody is listening to, like, Hatsune Miku exclusively, if somebody's listening just to Hatsune Miku, you know, most people would think, oh, well, they don't exist. What the hell are you doing with your life? But at the same time, if it means something to somebody, why would we take it from them? It's only until it becomes, like, a, a degenerative thing that it's harmful. I just come back to listen to it once in a blue moon. I have a deck of 560 Uno cards. That is absolutely insane. Are they all reversals? Because that would suck. That'd be such an, an annoying prank, wouldn't it? Just Uno, but like only 10% of the cards are actual numbers. The rest are just reverses. It'd, just, it'd be like Russian roulette for kids. I listen to the same annoying loud track with a bunch of complex stuff like every day, half the time. Hatsu is so good. Yeah, I knew there'd be at least one person here that likes Hatsune Miku. I'm hoping... um. Suicide Silence gets the Hatsune Miku uh, treatment, you know, digitize Mitch Lucker so that we can hear um, the price of beauty, maybe, live from a digital projection of an anime uh, rendition of Mitch Lucker. Anvil, perfect. Okay, let's drop these down into the suck hole that takes all of this crap down to our mm -hmm. workshop. And it's gone forever. Excellent. There's always one. I made Russian Relief for kids on a kids game. Was it Roblox? It's kind of hard, right? It's, it's really, really hard to kind of develop the idea of Russian roulette for kids on account of the whole seppuku theme and children not, want, not knowing enough about life to want to do seppuku whatsoever. I would find that a hard niche to penetrate, selling, um, selling seppuku to children. It might, it might be very difficult. What else are we throwing down there? Uh, the saw can also go into the workshop. That's it. That's all we got. Perfect. Nice. And we also want to take the bill down with us. I think I also, if there is a quest board down here, we oh, okay, we don't have one. I am going to go back to the store and buy one, though. I'm going to buy a couple of quest boards so we can stick all the quests on them. So we don't necessarily have to have them kind of like rolling around in a bunch of papyrus scrolls. Extremely jankly, janky and simplified, but it's funny. Roblox on build a boat. Wow. What is the roulette? The, the boat may not exist. The boat may be a ghost ship. Oh, speaking of which, has anybody here seen the film Ghost Ship? It was a really early 2000s film. God, it's so good. It is such a good horror film. It's so underrated. I've never seen anybody talk about this film in my life. Ever. I watched it with Yinset. No, I didn't. I'm going to watch it with Yinset. I watched it with somebody else uh, some years ago. It was such a good film. Wow. What a what a film. God, I can't wait to watch that. Probably going to be this weekend. Because we're both pretty busy people. I spend like 10 to 14 hours a day on YouTube. Where did we leave our money? It was in the... I think it was in the Logic Place, wasn't it? Yeah. By me, even if that means myself. I will check it out. I kind of want to do Roblox streams at some point as well. I was going to open up a bunch of public lobbies and then kind of do all of the... Uh, the games that people had recommended to me. Like, I, I did the first chapter of the Mimicon Hard. That was actually... That took ages to edit. But I kind of want to open it up for other people as well. Housing. Is this one? Won't find better prices than these. No, that's not the place. Where was it? There was a place where you can buy boards. Where you put the... You put the quests on them so that you can see them without having to open them up. In here, maybe? You won't find better prices Where would they be? than these. No, they're not here. Okay, that's strange. That's very strange. I thought it was in here, but I don't see them. No, just a bunch of windows and decorative poles and... 
Oh, an angled decorative pole. That's nice to tuck right into the corner. I needed heaps of those. Thank you, game. You won't find better prices. Uh, a couple either. of chairs here too. Simple chairs. Not really too interested in them though. All right. Explaining Russian really to children since I'm bored. You should play hours on Roblox. Hours. Might take hours, but it's really good. And Project Soul Skirmish. It's FFA Undertale style combat game with different routes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool indeed. I do like that. I don't know what FFA is, uh, but Undertale style games, I love that. I love Pick a Paths. Those uh, Pick a Path books were the ones that got me into reading in the first place. Has anybody else here read a Pick a Path book? They're so fun. Like Death Trap Dungeons, probably my favorite one. Or the Viking Burial Mound. They were like books that you could pick up. They were from the, the late 80s that basically um, you had a, a, a bunch of choices at the bottom of the of the page that you just read and it says, uh, if you did so-and-so, turn to page so-and-so, and then you get to continue the plot like that. And the whole book is just kind of like jumbled up. Uh, I don't remember where the bills were, the place that we kind of put all the quests up were. So I'm going to go and scout the other place that we just found. I did just see them. I don't know where they went, though. I don't think they were here. Here necessarily or even at the fishing village but they're in high demand right now i'm demanding for them Thanks for now, why would they be in here why would anybody hire somebody at this level of the game for a quest yuck i go now bye bye dave uh, sorry dj so i've got a friend um named dave uh, also one of my best friends uh he goes by dj it has no story at rpg but you're just able to kill or spare everyone and team, if you want to. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can also change your voice line text noise in the menu, which is sick. Nice. FNAF released a free book for its anniversary on Kindle. Oh, that that kind of book yesterday called VIP. Oh, pick a path. Nice. I was gonna. I was wondering until Scott Cawthon was gonna dip his toe into the old pick a path uh, section of of creation. It's so cool. It's so cool. Um, I keep mentioning that I have written two thirds of a book. I have actually written two thirds of a book. It's a draft. Um, I got a little bit ambitious on the seventh chapter that I was writing. And I turned the entire chapter into a pick a path. It's about 60 pages long. And it doesn't really matter what the outcome is because you still kind of like find a bunch of lore anyway. You can go through it and watch it, but it's all jumbled up like a pick a path. So here is not where the boards are. Maybe they're at the store inside of the uh, ice helm. Maybe we need to go into the dungeon store. Maybe that's where we need to go. What about this place? Do they sell anything here? No, this is just a stock market. All right, let's go up the hill. We've checked uh, basically every other place, essentially. Okay. Woo. One of my cousins and their parents watched the movies in theaters and there was no major gore in the movie. What? It's, it's supposed to be a, um, it's not a gory film. It's not supposed to be a gory film. My dude, if you thought uh, the FNAF film was supposed to be gory, you were uh, very misinformed. Like, it's got its jump scares. A lot of my friends called it uh, too childish, but the only friends who really said that don't know anything about the Five Nights at Freddy's lore. I've been giving up with that crap since, like, uh, 2014, I think, is when the first game came out. All right, let's grab this. Let's just take it down south. I suppose it doesn't really matter. We'll find one eventually. We'll just kind of, like, opportunistically buy it when we see it. I don't like FNAF much, but the game is fun. Just the game. Too childish, that's the word. Yeah, I, it's made to be that way. It's supposed to a blanket cover as many people on the internet as is humanly possible to consume. Because it's not necessarily like, because a lot of people say, oh, well, why are you uh, trying to like target children on the internet? They don't have any money. And those people don't seem to understand that those people, those, those kids on the internet, are always watching their iPads and always watching their TVs, and then you pull ad revenue from that. So no one's actually paying for anything, and you're still making money by making content. So you 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 have no obligations whatsoever. That's basically what I'm like now uh, these days. I'm I'm trying to go for the ad revenue route, so I don't have any obligations to people who would uh, donate necessarily. You can donate to support, but <laughs> like it, it's not going to make a huge difference. I difference ideally. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start setting up our forge. That can go there. All of these steps are in the way, though, sadly. Let's go ahead and just move these, I s suppose. Maybe, like, right here. Start stacking them up in this corner. Uh, there. And over here as well. Good. Three more. One there. 
Excellent. You gotta kind of place them before you drop them because they don't really play very well if you don't do this. Like, that looks real nice right there. Excellent. Uh, we also got more stairs that we can place, so I'm gonna do that before I forget as well. Is that the right way? Yes. Good. Put that there. And then I'm gonna knock them with a the hammer, and then we'll get onto the actual crafting element that we came here for in the first place. And how many more? I think there's just one spear, which is exactly what we wanted. Yeah, there's exactly one spear. Okay, let's go ahead and stick this up here. Just lay that there. What else have we got? We got this quest right here. So, we need the anvil right here. Very cash money, this thing. That can go the other way round because it's backwards. There we go. Let's put that right there as well so that the ingots are always piping hot when they come out of the furnace. And I'm going to take this here hammer. We really need another tool rack as well, don't we, for the, the workshop over here. Let's go up and buy one. I'm going to go up and buy one right now. It's the interaction part. I never really watch streams, but I can see why people love streams now. I know, right? I didn't really... I just streamed, right? Because I thought that that's what you had to do to get ahead. And then I started editing videos, and I fell in love with that. And then I realized that I was massively isolated and just editing videos. And now I stream, and I get all of the kind of like... Ow, I just hit my head on that... <laughs> on that hook right there. Now I get all of the social element that I wanted if I would have left house um, from my computer. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love streaming so much here. Just the feeling of your comments almost always having a response from the creator. It almost feels like having a call with a computer screen. Yeah, I mean, if the way I like to look at it, you're all here sitting on a couch playing a video game with me. Even if the couch is only this big and I'm the only one sitting on it. That's, that's how I see streams. We're all playing games to... Um, we're all playing games together, but I am playing games, um... Oops, didn't want that. I, I am playing the game at the same time, so... <laughs> you know, it's a couch full of people backseat gaming. <laughs> Which is actually not that bad, honestly. Gotta be said, a lot of people hate backseat gaming. I kinda like it, because you can try something out that somebody says in chat over like a couple of seconds. It it does not take long to figure something out. It's only when someone like Red Rux does something like, um make you dump all of your money into a tin can on exoptable money. That's the only time it's annoying. Why can't I? Why can't I like, ha oh, it's a blacksmith's hammer. That makes sense. We need a building hammer right here to knock that into place. Pretty sure that's where we want it. Oops. Or maybe we just kind of want to pick this up, stick it on this side of the anvil. No, we want to be able to see it, don't we? And put it like right there. That'd be kind of cool. That way we can see it from... Maybe we turn it around so we can... Maybe we put it, like, here? Yeah, that's a nice little workspace. I like that. Let's go ahead and knock that into place. And we'll put this over with the rest of the tools that we don't need over here. Uh, blacksmith Santa. That can go on there. We need the saw. Where is the saw? There it is. Ouch. It really is a saw. Gonna put the saw right there. That's not how I would have hung that up. <laughs> My dude, I would not have hung that up that way. Wowie. I mean, oh boy, touch grass, but it's summer and y'all can't get mad. Not where I live, it's winter. We're smack dab in the middle of winter. I also took place last night in a Delta Room stream with a check and pick what happens. That's pretty cool. Huh? That's pretty cool indeed. Ah, that's the blacksmith Sam. I want to knock these two play things into here and here so that they don't accidentally get picked up. Now, we need to figure this out, right? So, we need 400... Oh, actually, you know what? I know this is probably going to be a little annoying. I'm going to take all of this crap off of here. Let's go ahead and knock that out of place. Put that there. Because if we put the uh, kind of like order bill board right there, then we'll be able to just look at the note instead of just like opening the note over and over again. We had Sybil's G and the streamer crash nine times. Mm, apples. Hello there, Mr. Purple. Uh, I'm glad to see you're getting some fruit instead of the uh, rotting visceral meat of children uh, stuff into animatronic suits it's 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 nice that you've changed your diet okay, okay. so are they here they could actually be here no of course they're not here where the hell did they go i'm certain they were here weird oh it could be a prospecting guild thing as well okay let's do this one quest no actually now that i do think about it those billboards were where the core stone no Yes, core stone uh, outtake pipes were. I like this workshop. This is a nice workshop. Uh, I'm going to move this here. Little, what's my dingle? Uh, just over here. Boop. Put that there. And 
And this can also get stacked up on top of there. Um. Yeah, good enough. Nothing's going on top of it anyway. So if we keep that one there, we can actually put the billboard right there and we'll be in a really good spot. So let's knock that into place. We'll put this down and let's go ahead and stock up all of our tools on here. Nice. So what do we need? We need 400 core stone for this quest. How much core stone do we have? None. Do we have any? Wait, what the hell is going on with the core stone? Why aren't we harvesting any core stone? This doesn't make any sense to me. We're right at the bottom level. We should have some core stone by now. We don't have any. Weird. Oh, also the furthest machine isn't working at all. Weird indeed. Hello, machine? What's wrong? You okay? Right. What if we, like, swap sides? Mm, we put this one here. Nope. I mean, there is pressure because the water's coming out of the end here. Uh, that is super strange. I don't know what is going on here. Gotta put that back, obviously. These machines are working like absolute garbage. They're not processing a single little lick of core stone. Okay, that's a ruby. That's fine. It's not dumping it off the edge here, is it? What the hell is this? Uncut sapphire. How did that make it through the gem cutter? Oh, maybe it was already ahead of the gem, uh, behind the gem cutter when we moved it. Okay, we'll cut that. Woo! Apples are always in my diet. Well, you know what they say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, and sometimes even longer, depending on how hard you can throw. Hey, Jensen, what is your opinion on the alpha male motivation brain rot going on right now? Oh my god, you've opened a can of worms. I mean, people put a lot of money in, into it, but some people take it seriously. I was... A couple of months ago, I was weighing up the idea, I was talking with Yin Set about this, about starting a second channel where I give actual good alpha male advice, like don't hit woman, don't be a piece of garbage, acknowledge when you're at fault and take accountability, like good diet, good exercise, you just don't be a piece of crap, right? And uh, she said, no, no, you don't, you don't want to be lumped in with those guys. And uh, I insisted, yeah, but... I want to rip on these guys for free. I can do it for free on YouTube. I can rip on these guys and then make content that people actually want to see based on how crap these people are. And she said, no, no, you you, you just don't want to. You, you don't want to do that. Which is a little bit funny, honestly, that she's kind of like dictating what I can and can't do on, on my own channels. But like I was actually going to put together um, a channel just based on uh, self upskilling, I guess you could call it. It should be common sense. It should be common sense. But you have to take into account, some people need the Bible to know not to murder or bugger their neighbor's wife. Some people actually need that. Some people need that book to hear that advice and then not do those things. Thou shalt not kill. Oh! Oh, oh, that's exactly what I was doing wrong. That's why I'm in prison for life. Oh, that makes so much sense. If only someone had given me this book to tell me how to act. Like, it's... Yeah, religion's important in some places. It forms communities. It, it forms a common interest among some people. But my God, the advice that you get from the Bible... Here in New Zealand, it's taught in preschool. Like, quite frankly, it's taught in preschool. So yeah, I was just... Uh, I, I, I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll create my own workshop for, for people who would otherwise find Andrew Tate... And then, like, teach them, teach them the the pillars of of manhood, which is um, fear, love, respect. You should always start with love. You you because you can love outwards, right? If you give love, you will be loved. Respect. If you give respect, you will be respected. But it takes harder work because you actually have to be good at everything worth being respected for. Third is fear. You don't ever want to be known for fear because it means that you're incapable of love and respect. And if you're incapable of those two things, you're probably a piece of garbage. You're probably Andrew Tate and uh, fear is just the, the, the thing that you should be kind of harping on about. You know, you, uh, the, kind of, the kind of person who walks into an office on any day and just has a pissed off demeanour about them, those kind of people. The, pe the people who never let other people get close because they're personally afraid. That's what fear does, right? Because you project fear, you get fear. It's as simple as that. So that was uh, kind of like, I was going to make a series uh, based on that. 
And kind of like self-defense for men as well. Because self-defense is, is um, it's not taught well at all. Like from what I've seen, self-defense here in New Zealand, that is taught to people here in New Zealand that would save them from a crime, would also get them a manslaughter charge if they uh, did it wrong. So like, it's, it's real important to know how to defend yourself. And also defend yourself against the consequences of someone else's crime as well. I'm gonna knock all these into place in case I accidentally pick them up. Like there's so many things that people should just know. How to aim a gun, how to use a bow, how to chop wood, all of that kind of stuff. And that's exactly the kind of channel that I was going to put forward. So I, there is a place for it. There's just no place for like YouTube advice on it. I just join, join the stream. First I'm watching it on my phone instead of my PC. Aim a gun. Yeah, everyone should know how to aim a gun. I personally believe that. And I live in a country where firearms have massive uh, restrictions. Like you need... Years and years and years of training, references, experience with firearms, and uh, connections with firearms clubs just to have a license to own a pistol. Not to fire the pistol, that's a different license, but to own a pistol, you need a collector's license, which takes years and years and years to get. To get a pistol firearms license, uh, you're also able to buy ammunition for it but you are literally only able to use that pistol at the firearms club that you go to. So keep your restrictions on concealed uh, firearms and such. I'm too young for that, but I've been able to test a bigger musket-sized gun with no bullets, but I got to fire it with nothing in it before. I don't really remember when it was, but I was pretty young. Other than that, I've only touched a gun two other times. It's important to know. It is important to know, because if anything does happen in this world, this world moves fast. We've only had internet for around about 40 years. Oh, piss. Ah, oh, we missed the elevator. Damn it. I was going to go back down the uh, hill and get some core stone. We've only had internet for around about 40 years, and we've only utilized the internet for around about 20 years. So if you consider just how much the world has changed in the last 20 years, you should probably realize that if the world is going to move that fast, you should probably know how to aim a gun in case your country gets drafted into some kind of war of some sort, because that is also happening fast. I've shot three guns before. I've only held a BB gun. I've shot a few. I've gone to a pistol club. I'm a natural. I'm a natural with a pistol, unfortunately. I also played a lot of airsoft. Uh, so I do understand why New Zealand has uh, restrictions. We also have airsoft gun restrictions as well. You have to be a club member to be able to purchase what we call a restricted air gun, which is uh, pretty crazy if you think about it on the global scale. But at the same time, I'm pretty proud of it as well. I'm, pr I'm pretty damn proud that we have uh, licensing restrictions for firearms because if it was really easy for everyone to get, we'd have so many violent crimes in the country. It'd be it'd just crazy. I'm going to take uh, everything that we've made here and I'm going to bring it over to the Ice Helm Forge because I think that we could probably do with getting all of this over here just in case we already have enough resources to get through the quest that we just picked up. Wait, now I remember. My gosh, key memory unlocked. I did a lot of target shooting as well. Like, uh, for a club. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm, I'm really, really good with a firearm. I guess I've shot a gun then. Yeah, I think everybody has shot a gun at some point. Because you got to have a healthy relationship with guns to live in this world anyway. Especially with things like Call of Duty. Right? Like, video game violence is one of those things that a lot of people relish in. Like, just the cruelty of video games... If they don't understand the tool, the, the weapons that they're using are actually tools, they're not weapons. Like, you don't pick it up with the intent of killing somebody unless somebody has paid you to do so, flown you to another country, and then put their flag on you to say, hey, if you shoot at this guy, he's going to shoot back, right? That is the only instance at which a gun is a weapon. Other than that, it's a tool. It's a, sport, it's a tool for sports. It's a tool for gathering food. And if you don't see a gun as a tool, you're going to have a really, really unhealthy relationship uh, with any kind of violence. I don't play Call of Duty or shooting games much. I feel like everybody should play them a little bit. It gives it gives you really good hand-eye coordination. Do you know Five Nights at Freddy's just turned 10 years old? Yeah, um, I think Scott, I don't know if he's still in the chat. He just mentioned that they released a pick a book on the internet, which is really cool. I do love that. I love pick a so much. We'll keep. So we've got these scales. We need 400 of this core stone right here. We've got 500. Perfect. I'll just use that. I'll just use that whole bar. What else do we need? We need 1,000 gold, which we've got ample of. We've got so much gold here, it's not funny. Let's put this on the scale. We need 1,000. We've got 25,000. 
All right, let's go ahead and get the saw and start cutting into it. Okay, I think that that top one's probably going to be the one that we want to weigh, right? 3,000. 1.6 thousand. That's perfect, actually. That's exactly what we want. And for the last one, we want 5,000 iron. By the way, this is five tons of iron that we're going to put in here. Uh, we only have 135 tons of iron, so let's go ahead and cut this up a bunch of times. Uh, I've got a good feeling about that top one right there. I didn't do any kind of, like, math, but I've got a really good feeling about that top one. Go ahead, stick it in here. We should probably get ourselves a little sorting system for... 5,000? No, 2.1. So this one is probably going to... No, that's only 4 grand. Really? It's only 4 grand? Ah. Huh. Strange. What else have we got? This one? Maybe? One might do the trick. 38,000? That one's way too heavy. Uh, this one then? What is this? 8,000. Okay, so these three would correlate well into... A single ingot. We need another one of those uh, little furnaces, a little automated furnace, to go over here, I think. Definitely. First time I shot a gun, I'm pretty sure I was nine. I was probably like six years old, I think. My dad took me trap shooting with a shotgun. Fortunately, they only had half of the gunpowder in the shotgun, so I, um, I didn't get knocked on my ass. It's quite funny. Last night I played a genocide and pacifist routes on Project Soul Skirmish. While having a high level in the genocide route, a kid tried to team on me and I beat him in like under 10 seconds. His friend just stood there. Nice. Revenge is fun sometimes, yes. And it's at the touch of your fingertips with video games. That's what I was saying. That's that's the thing you got to be careful of. When you start kind of like thinking, oh yes, I like how this feels to, to murder. I like how that feels. That's probably when you should take a, a bit of a step back and say, oh, I'm um becoming a psychopath. I, I need to touch grass. I need, I need to touch grass. I need to go outside and I need to kiss a stranger. To, to wake me up from this this weird stupor that I've got. Taylor's here. Hey, I changed my name to Taylor's here, but I think I'm going to change it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change it to whatever you please, my dude. Uh, I'm going to stick this one there. This is pretty close to the workshop that we're using. All right, let's go ahead and stick this in. Probably get a bucket over here too. Uh, it's already full of ingots. I'll just drop this in there and another one over here. And this is the weight we need. I know we've made a bit of a mess, but uh, we are getting like 20 grand's worth of uh, resources from this. Oh, we should get a scale over here too. What's this? 8,000. Perfect. So, what does he want us to make? He wants us to make a sword. That's fine. So, that's a dagger. That's an axe. That's a sword. Nice. We need the blacksmith's hammer handy. Let's go ahead and just get this out so we have it. Woo. Good. I don't want to take it to real life though, lol. Yeah, definitely don't take it uh, to real life. Kiss a stranger? Yeah, go out there and plant your lips on a on a random stranger, or even like a like a, a picture of a stranger. Just go up to a shop window, like a, a nice shop window, like a bank or like a department store, and and just give the, uh, the 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 image, the poster on the other side, just a real nice kiss. Why not? Who's gonna stop you? It's not a crime. It's not a crime to kiss somebody's window. Bro, I would look like a weirdo doing that at my young age. You'd look like a weirdo doing it in adult years as well. You'd probably look even worse in, as an adult, got to be said. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of these ingots onto this here anvil. We don't want them to cool. We are going to pick up the blacksmith's hammer. We're going to bang him into the sword right here. That's a nice looking sword, actually. It is six tons big, though. We are going to go upstairs. Let's put that there. And we're going to go and get ourselves a billion prospecting tokens. Go ahead and just drop that in the pile of ingots there. Drop the bucket there too, so we don't have to carry it up. Yeah, no, I think it'd look worse as an adult. Gotta be said. We'll go and hand in this quest. We'll take this guy's payment, we'll take his legal tender, and then we'll go and I think we'll probably get the outtake pipe and then we'll move over to Dragon's Dogma. Okay, good. Man, this has been a good session, huh? Even though the, mach the machines are absolute garbage and don't, don't function whatsoever. That's a nice view. I like that. Would you kiss the ugliest woman in the universe? Of... Of course... What? Would you kiss the ugliest woman in the universe or kiss the most handsome man in the universe? Well, beauty is subjective, isn't it? Uh, however, I would probably take Chris Hemsworth. 
I, I know the question you asked me, and I've gone a few steps further. It's Chris, it's Chris Hemsworth. It's definitely Chris Hemsworth. Or Scott Adkins. Where's that car? Dude, where's my car? We didn't walk back here, did we? Oh, I was probably down the milf sack with her. Uh, all right, we're getting near the car because I don't know if we can put the sword in the bucket. Yeah, probably Chris Hemsworth. Just giving it a good think. He's definitely my type. What a weird question. Does everybody think I'm straight or something? <laughs> oh my god. This world, huh? So why the hell is this pumping out core stone at such an alarming rate and the other place is not? God, the frame drop. Oh, I think the, um, the spanners down south have finally run out. Okay, so now we can probably get away with turning off the MILF's aquifer, right? Because I think the frame drop stun to impede our progress a little bit too much. I'm stuck. Oh, that's embarrassing. There we go. And let's come over here. Off it goes. Finally. Good. Oh my god, the frames have already come back. We could also just take this intake pipe, but we are about to hand in the quest. Anything else? Anything else that we need to turn on or off? No. No, not at all. Excellent. I understand. You're not strange. I'm going to play baseball so I can chuck an apple at 90 miles per hour. Damn, man, that'll keep the uh, that'll keep the doctors away. I love baseball, by the way. I God, it's such a fun game. I played cricket for three years as a kid, and I hated every second of it. Well, maybe not every second. I just wanted to play a sport where I hit something with a stick. That was it. That's all I wanted to do. And my granddad really liked cricket, so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll try that out. And I did it for three seasons. Make no mistake, I hated it, but we won, I think, 90% of our games every single season. And we beat the A team of a team two ages older than us as well, which is pretty crazy as well. I was a crazy good batsman. Uh, then I moved on to hockey. God, that was fun. I was uh, known as, uh, I was striker, which is like the front middle position because I always just hog the ball from the other team. Every time they had, they hog the ball, I'd be able to get it and hit that thing with a stick so goddamn hard. It would go halfway up the field and we'd score goals because um, the wings would always uh, kind of advance every time I I would give the, the ball a good crack. There was also this real satisfying cracking sound when you hit it. Whereas in cricket, you, you just got to kind of like let the ball bounce off the bat. There's no satisfaction in it. It sucks ass. What a crap sport. And you got to spend most of it standing out in a cold, rainy field waiting for the ball to come to you when it probably statistically won't. Uh, we didn't grab the... Um, we didn't grab the truck. And we didn't grab the sword. Whoops. Oh, so uh, then, after uh, I played hockey, we also won every single game we played when I played hockey. I played that for a year and a half, but sadly I, I lived so far out of the city that I couldn't make it to most games. Uh, what happened after then? My little sister got into hockey. She almost got into our regional professional team just based on uh, her natural skills alone. Which is also very funny. But, uh, you know, because we lived so far out of the city, she couldn't do that either. Uh, as time went on, I ended up going to... Uh, what is it called? California. I went to California for a month with uh, Yin Se. She uh, took me along to meet her family, and I, I loved it. I went to the batting cages there, and I... God, I was so good at those. So good at those. I only know you existed like two weeks ago, maybe three. Same. Really wanted me to get into baseball, my dad. My kitten is hunting one down one of our biggest cats. Oh, that's cute. I don't like cats necessarily. My mother uh, used to hoard them because she worked for SPCAs. They're very standoffish. I'm more of a dog guy, personally. Uh, so, uh, right. Workflow. We need to take this truck up to the dungeon. We need to go and we need to get our sword. We need to hand it in. Then we need to buy our pipe and we are done. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> we went up there real fast. I don't know how that worked. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and grab our sword. Our literally six ton sword. Put that there. Grab our bucket. So we've got something to put our prospecting tokens in, which is probably unnecessary because we don't need any other legal tender whatsoever. Excellent. Ah. Yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? When, when you meet someone new and you just like find out all of these really, really cool things about them all at once, it's real neat. I love that as well. I find that with chatters quite frequently. I'll meet somebody new for the first time and they'll be like a like a pixel artist 
who just did a thumbnail for me, and that alone is really, really cool. Or they'll be like a a Junji Ito level of skill level kind of sketch artist as well. Scott's World can do that. Scott's World is almost Junji level of, of good at sketch. What a guy. So many talented people in my Discord, actually. I think I attract that kind of people. Maybe it's the muscles. I prefer dogs. I have a history with them. Yeah, I know, right? I was growing up and... Um, uh, when I had that meningitis, I ended up losing my most of my friends. A few weeks before I caught that meningitis, uh, my beloved childhood dog had been put down. So uh, that was a very miserable time. A very, very miserable time indeed. Or two weeks after. I can't remember. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a sad time. It was a sad time. I'll never forget it. My God, we are not driving well. Yeah, so we want to go this way, end up on the right side of our own property... And then we'll go up to the castle. But yeah, uh, the dog that I grew up with uh, was a purebred hunterway, gorgeous little thing. Uh, he was only a couple of days older than I was. Uh, my mum basically stole him from the SPCA she was working at because he was due to be put down. And he was just too cute. And the only thing that was wrong with him is that he had gastric distress. So he was literally about to be executed because he farted a bit. Uh, which, obviously, he got over within a couple of days, as most animals and humans do with gastric distress. I d don't know who the hell signed off on that, but it was a stupid idea. Anyway, my mum uh, snuck him into her lab coat and uh, took him out of the SPCA, and a few days later, I was born. Pretty crazy. A full stomach pretty cool, actually. Pretty cool story. I love cats. Most people love cats. Uh, this is not what we want. This is the money. We want the sword, don't we? We definitely want the sword. Okay, come up here. And we'll drop that into the back of the ute. Where is the sword? There it is. Uh, did the money just fly? Oh, no! <laughs> money just flew out of our truck. Okay, there we go. I just welded it in there using a cheeky little exploit. Uh, let's grab the sword right here. Uh, let's go kill this guy. I'm killing you now, sir. Okay, it didn't do anything. Sad. Sad. Okay, we did do a quest though, which is pretty cool. I'd like you to a dog I had some... passed away in 2022, somewhere near June or July. I'm really sorry to hear that tale. That sucks. Dogs are... Oh, this ain't what I wanted. Yes, it is. That's exactly what you wanted, you twit. That was all of my core stone. Give me this and I'll give you my tokens. I can't believe this. I cried so much. Yeah, I, 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 the waterworks came out when uh, my dog was passed away as well. I can never connect with pa with cats just as well as I could connect with my dog. Honestly, that sword is probably worthless to us now, right? It's a worthless. It's a worthless sword. Specific. Oh, maybe that we did the materials out of order. I don't think we can melt this down though. I think we're pretty much buggered with this thing. How much is it going to cost? Can't tell. Can't sell it. Ah, that sucks. It sucks ass. What is it worth? Ooh. It is worth $191,000. And that guard was just like, Pfft. Well, there's a sword. Pfft. Idiot. I'm not paying 18 grand for that piece of crap. What an asshole. What an actual asshole. What a twist. What an, uh, you know what, actually? I'll, I'll come back to this when I'm not as angry. I am so so angry at that right now. I didn't realize it initially. I am very, very furious at the fact that that didn't work. And I'm probably going to have to Google whether or not we can melt down the sword because that was all of our core stone. Anyway, I'm going to move on to Dragon's Dogma now. So I'm not going anywhere, but I am going to do an outro for the VOD boys watching on YouTube. And yes, there are some. Thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist of four Hydranera. And right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down the description of this video, you're going to find a link to my Discord. Go join it. You can talk to me and my community at your leisure. You can vote on the games I play. You can see the albums that I post. You can talk in the chat or you could just harass me, which is what everybody else is doing. And until I make the next episode or you catch the next stream, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.